Have you ever seen a megalithic humanoid entity with a warning siren in place of its head? What about an ambush predator that waits for cars to drive under bridges to rip out the passengers and consume them? A parasitic worm that invades the bodies of common birds and transforms them into ravenous pack-hunting beasts? How about a creature that feeds by replacing the entrances to regular rooms with the maw to its frighteningly human-like mouth? While this may sound like the delusional ramblings of a man wearing a tinfoil hat and holding a sign that says the end is nigh, they're actually stories based off the artwork of Trevor Henderson, an incredibly talented artist who blends found footage, creature design, and the supernatural into a nightmarish catalog of works depicting a plethora of monstrosities. In this video, we'll be delving into that world and discussing these creations. Without further ado, let's journey into the world of Trevor Henderson's work. Siren Head Bullhorn Slenderman Speaker Face a monstrosity known by many names. Siren Head is a tall skeletal humanoid creature with a long pole and multiple sirens in place of a head and neck. No shit. These sirens have a set of gums and teeth on the inside of them. Its skin is tightly wrapped around its bones like a kid in a trash bag with a vacuum. Siren Head has dry papery skin like the leaf of a backwoods. Speaking of, am I the only one that thinks that loose shredded tobacco looks like a bunch of collected pubic hairs? Just me? Okay. It's thought that like a stick bug, the Siren Head has evolved to look exactly like telephone wire poles in order to blend into the environment. Siren Heads are apex predators in both forests and any environment with plentiful human and infrastructure, consuming every creature they come across, like that fisherman guy that catches random ocean fish and then eats them raw to test if they're poisonous. Even if they've already been established as poisonous. That's real and it's called this. You're welcome. There's this myth going around that Siren Head doesn't eat. It's actually that he doesn't need to eat. He eats humans and animals just because he's a sick f and thinks it's pretty funny. Siren Head has no eyes. And while some claim that he can still see, like the common bat or Stevie Wonder, this creature moves and locates prey using echolocation, sending out indetectable pulses of sound constantly and receiving accurate feedback as to where your dumbass is hiding. The two sirens on its head will often speak in unison and throw out seemingly random words and numbers in a static-filled echoey electronic hum. This creature is also capable of replicating any noise that it hears, including human speech, animal calls, and of course, sirens, digital, and other mechanical noises. Bring a bucket and a mop for this wet-ass viewer. Siren Head seems to be more intelligent than your average human. You gotta be smart to get a human out of their house if you look like the result of someone tripping balls on mushrooms on Halloween night and seeing an especially creepy telephone pole. The noises that he uses to lure victims will change from person to person. Similar to a skinwalker, Siren Head often uses the voices or screams for help of a loved one or any other voice that it thinks could manipulate a victim into leaving safety. It will also specialize the noises by stalking a victim for a series of weeks to understand its behavior. Many paranormal researchers theorize that the Siren Head belongs to a larger collection of similar humanoid creatures. There have been documentations of lamppost heads, telephone pole heads, and 5G cell station heads, just to name a few. That's right, that crazy swamp lady that burnt down the 5G tower was actually defending you from Siren Heads, and you all just went and put her in jail. Now look at all the places that he has to hide. Siren Heads Rise to Fame mirrors another internet horror celebrity, Slenderman. Often being called the new Slenderman, this has made the actual Slenderman quite bitter. He was already behaving erratically, as he had slid into alcoholism as so many former child stars do. In a blind drunken rage, Slenderman attempted to run down Siren Head in his car, which was documented by a bunch of 10-year-olds writing Slenderman vs. Siren Head fanfics. <laughs> Throw rocks through your windows, you dumb whore. Hey Satana, add polycephalic human skeletons to my shopping list. I've added polycephalic human skeleton to your shopping list. 
A strange handmade automaton found in the hidden back room of the Church of the Benevolent Sound in Claremont, Ohio. Discovered by two teenage urban explorers in 1986, both claim to have heard it sing in their presence. While both claim its sound was like, quote, nothing I've ever heard, both suffered from extreme insomnia, difficulty concentrating, and a desperate need to go back to the clergyman to hear it sing again. This was the only information posted alongside images of this newly discovered entity dubbed the Singing Clergyman. This entity was discovered by paranormal investigator Trevor Henderson, and in his usual MO, he just posted it dicks out on social media. <laughs> Never gets old. While this is the only information that we have on this anomalous creature so far, it can still tell us quite a bit about this entity. For starters, we know it was found in a hidden back room of a church in 1986 by two urban explorers in, ew, Ohio. Go back to covering creatures in hell, why don't we? The location it was found, in combination with its clothing and its name, suggests a heavy religious association between this creature and possibly Christianity. God damn it, I hate these ones. I get a mild skin irritation whenever I walk past the threshold of a church. What do you think this humanoid doll with a leaking open mouth could be used for? <laughs> That's I incorrect. You are gross and banned from participating from the rest of the episode. Because of the religious association, the first idea that comes to mind about what this thing is for would be religious purposes. But what specifically? I can see one of two options. Either humans assembled this purely out of hubris and curiosity without knowing what would happen, or they've designed it with a clear idea in mind. Knowing humans, it's likely the former. Whether or not this creature's paranormal abilities after construction were intentional is impossible to know. But if it was on purpose, we can potentially get an understanding of its use by looking at its effects. The teenagers claimed it was like nothing they'd ever heard before, but they provided no more information about what it sounded like specifically. Some eyewitness you are, dumb shit. It looks from the evidence to be pleasurable, and even seems to have a cognitohazard-like effect on the human mind, making any victim desperate to go back to hear them sing again. Not only this, but all human victims suffer from extreme insomnia and difficulty concentrating. As someone who's a bad focus boy, that last part just sounds like ADHD. One victim of this creature also blames it for his piss kink, but I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> Because you're beautiful. Trevor claims that at the time of him writing the description of this entity, the machine's location is unknown. I don't have it. Why would you even suggest something like that? I see two possibilities for where it could be. It could be that someone who became addicted to this machine's songs grabbed it and brought it home, making a jerk-off shrine to it. It could also be possible that someone learned of this machine's power, slipped in some earplugs, and grabbed it to be used for various nefarious and likely hilarious purposes. Using this creature as some sort of god figure could allow you to control the minds of the masses, holding the machine from them until they bend to your will so they can finally hear its sweet song again. I got $500 on this being invented to create some sort of sex cult. Uh. This is all the information I can decipher about this machine from Trevor's initial message. I will be keeping an eye out for any other updates about this creature and many others from Trevor's lore and other supernatural investigators. Yo, mama, yo, mama. Bro. Bro. Disclaimer, this is possibly the most up monster I've ever covered. This video contains imagery and descriptions relating to pregnancy and childbirth that some may find unsettling. Viewer discretion is advised. The Forgotten Baby is a man-sized fetus-looking creature with pinkish slime-covered translucent veiny skin, no teeth, and eyes that are disproportionately large, even for its already disproportionately large head. The forgotten baby was rumored to have been a believed miscarriage. When the doctors informed the expecting couple of this situation, the couple opted to remove the mass of cells that they believed to be dead from the woman's uterus, and placed it aside to be discarded in a medical waste receptacle. However, the doctor noticed it barely moving, and out of morbid curiosity, hid the being and only claimed to get rid of it. He took it home and began using everything in the kitchen sink to get it to grow. I'm talking growth hormones, steroids, insect testosterone, something that only has research about it written in Russian. He even buried it legs deep in plant fertilizer. I'm so sorry to all the little boys and girls lifting hard in the weight room that look up to Forgotten Baby because he transformed his body, but the Forgotten Baby is a fake natty. He was just lying to sell his patented brand of birth canal creatine. 
The doctor never really thought to restrain the man-sized fetus that he kept in his basement. Seriously, how the hell did this one get through human medical school? It means nothing. I like how our species does it. We just let anyone do surgery. Same as owning guns and drivers. So anyways, like any responsible, self-respecting physician, one day this doctor blacks out after taking a lot of horse tranquilizer that he prescribed to himself, thought the man-sized fetus scream gurgling in his living room was his dog barking to get outside, which he didn't have a dog, and proceeds to let it outside. The huge problem here, aside from everything else that's beyond belief about this entire situation, this being never required a brain past the point of a barely developed fetus leading to strange and horrific consequences for its behavioral psychology. Immediately upon being let outside, this being began to look in the windows of every house it encountered until it found an expectant mother. This being would then wait until everyone in the house was asleep and compress itself into an impossibly small size to squeeze through any crack in the structure of the house. It will then attempt to put its hand on the belly of the pregnant woman, causing the woman to miscarry. After making contact, it will leave the house. Before too long, the forgotten baby will return to the house with much more sinister intentions. It enters the bedroom of the sleeping woman and attempts to compress itself and crawl the f up inside of her. The slime its skin secretes puts the woman in a sedative state when this happens, so she doesn't freak the f out about the horrific things that are happening to her. Sometimes it re-expands on the way in by accident, this usually kills a woman in an explosion of viscera, as, you know, there's basically the entire body of a full-grown f***ing man up there. This reminds me of that one porn of that lady who had a giant vagina and stuck the entire head of a bald man in there. Do you know that one? No? Okay, then, me neither, then. The most f***ed up part is if it actually gets inside of the womb. From here, the forgotten baby hooks can somehow override the mother's normal behavior to essentially brainwash them into protecting it. Like how that wasp who shits eggs in caterpillars makes the caterpillar love the worms growing inside of them. Nature is just so beautiful sometimes. I mean, not right now. This is f***ing awful, but I don't know, touch some grass. She will forget that she lost her baby and refuse any attempts to convince her otherwise. Even if shown evidence, she will reject the notion and protect the monstrosity at all costs even isolating herself from all those who used to be closest to her. This monster never grows or comes to term, just leeching nutrients off the mother until she slowly withers away. A slow, painful death. Her skin begins to pale, her energy levels drop, along with, you know, bone density. Nails, hair, and teeth fall out. F*** it, the eyes fall out too. <laughs> That's one hell of a tapeworm you got there, baby. Maybe just a sh ton of vodka and cigarettes then? Don't pussy out halfway through or you'll end up something like our resident human, the Eye Prophet. Fucking asshole. I really hope I didn't just lose the entire female section of my audience with this one. Don't look at me like that. I didn't write the concept. I just based it off of Clark Tidor's video, extrapolated the science, and wrote some jokes. This is a really disturbing one, even for me. I feel like someone's gonna use this video as evidence for their Huffington Post listicle about why unbirth porn is problematic. The stink of old meat on the wind, rotten and cloying. Something moves through the long grass. It sees you through holes in ancient skin like leather, breaking into a sprint while it mumbles and croons through the wound where a head should be. Heed the cries of the rot walker. It never sleeps, forever wandering restlessly, searching for a face it remembers but can never have. Every witness spurs the beast with mistaken hope until it realizes that the new face doesn't feel right. This was the only information posted alongside photographic documentation of what looks to be a novel anomalous creature. This entity, dubbed the Rot Walker, was first documented by Trevor Henderson, and described further in detail in a comment by paranormal investigator Heavenly Aesthetic. This creature resembles a decapitated cow with five large rebar shoved down its neck hole. A detached human face hangs from the top pole, speared directly through the forehead. This is a creature that forever seeks the one thing it's missing. Acceptance. It's fucking head. Has this idiot tried a cow head yet? No? Of course he hasn't. I feel like that might legitimately solve his problem if he got it stuck on in the right orientation. Even though this guy looks quite mysterious, like most animals, its behavior is actually quite predictable. The Rottwalker typically appears in agricultural regions, most often nearby slaughterhouses but it's been spotted on the outskirts of just about any populated area that's far enough removed from high-traffic regions. The creature roams aimlessly, 
letting out an agonizing, guttural wail mixed with a cacophonous metal scraping. The entity will continue this pattern until it locates a human, at which point the wail will turn into an angry, almost frenzied screech. The Rottwalker runs full speed at its intended target with the rebar protruding from its neck aimed directly at the forehead of the victim. After the entity kills the prey, the face that hangs from its top bar changes to that of the person that it just killed. Nature is just so beautiful sometimes. I mean, not right now. This makes me feel like all national parks should be replaced with Walmarts, but I don't know, put your hand in a dog's mouth or something. If the corpse of the individual is located, the face of the victim is removed with surgical precision, leaving the muscles of the facial structure exposed. Since the Rottwalker doesn't have any sharp teeth or claws, or damn thumbs to hold things, how exactly it cuts off the face so perfectly baffles researchers at the Bureau of Anomalous Containment. As they were already struggling to figure out how a cow without a damn head would be able to function biologically. Thing is, I'm pretty sure this creature isn't of a biological nature at all. While this entity's body initially appears bovine in nature, upon closer examination, one can see that its front legs have more segments and joints than a regular cow's. The skeletal structure of this animal looks as though if it tried to run, it would have a worse top speed than an overweight toddler in Crocs. But all the dead people with no fucking faces could probably run faster than that, so where do we go from here? Simple. I believe that there are fundamentally different factors animating this abomination of what looks to be alien carrion and industrial scaffolding materials. Preternatural forces. This brings us back to the whole ripping off people's faces and wearing them thing. It's all fun and games when you do it once or twice, but I think this guy's starting to get addicted. The reason why this creature hunts individuals for their faces is yet unknown, but theorizing the reason may lead one to a better understanding of the nature of the entity. Some researchers believe that the Rottwalker is symbolic of a loss of an animal's identity and farming's humanity associated with the meat industry. A lumbering abomination of bovine flesh brutalized by industrial steel given a hollow human facade. This begs the question, where did the Rottwalker come from? A scientific abomination made by a vegan genetics doctorate with a loose understanding of their own morals and diet? An aggressive marketing campaign from the Chick-fil-A corporation gone wrong? Maybe it's just cow god saying fuck you. The universe is pretty weird. The answer is often stupider than you think. The tangled mass of fly-blown, putrefying corpses shifts and moves ever so slightly. One body tumbles off another and a lone, decrepit figure slowly rises from the carrion. This image was recently posted to social media, depicting what appears to be a novel anomalous creature. This was posted by paranormal investigator Trevor Henderson, who basically pulled the equivalent of responding to the Foundation's cease and desist by sending back the first dick pic on Google Images. Absolute savagery in the first degree. It was also given a label, or perhaps a name, by its discoverer, Flyblown. Now looking at this creature, we have to mention the obvious. Looks like the worst blowjob ever. Braces aren't fixing this one, buddy. Jesus Christ, it's like she's triple British. The horrific set of chompers she got aside, perhaps we can learn more about this monstrosity if we take a look at its name. Flyblown is defined as dirty or contaminated, especially through contact with flies and their eggs or larvae. It usually refers to food, carrion, aka dead animals, or rotting meat. In the most gruesome cases, living, but you know, probably dying, animals can get fly eggs laid in them, slowly being consumed by the creature that takes the crown for symbolic embodiment of things that are fucking disgusting. The fly. This brings me to my theory about what I think this creature may be. I think that this was perhaps a regular woman at one point. Fun fact, did you know that many species of parasitic wasps lay their eggs inside of other insects? When the eggs hatch, the larvae can then release chemicals that change the insect's behavior to make them act in a manner that produces the ideal environment for the growth of the larva. Well, that wasn't very fun, but it was a fact. I believe that this woman may have fallen victim to a species of anomalous insect that physiologically resembles a housefly. She may or may not have turned into a corpse by other means before this happened, but potential suffering with fly eggs and eye sockets aside, she has now rebranded herself as Fly Lady or some shit. The flies slowly consumed and laid eggs in the woman's brain. Somehow, when the flies replaced her brain, they began to act as some sort of pseudo-neural structure, controlling the woman's husk. She essentially becomes a mobile nursery and hive for this species of anomalous fly. The creature was obsessed with consuming filth, which was often whatever decaying animal she happened to shamble across, feeding the growing brood that overtakes more and more of her lifeless body each day. 
After stuffing herself to the brim with rotting carrion, she would shamble off, searching for a warm, damp place with filth to nestle in, providing for her children with the ideal place to gestate. Nature is just so beautiful sometimes. I mean, not right now. This makes me want to fill my shoes with fucking vomit, but I don't know, stare directly into the sun. As the flies overtook more and more of her body, they ate the muscles that allowed her to move, slowly reducing her to a skeleton. Each of the flies produced, as nature does, intend to reproduce in another host, just as their ancestors did. We were never told where this picture was taken. These flies could be anywhere. How sure are you of what that pest on your food really is? That's why they begged me repeatedly not to put the dead bird in my mouth. So the obvious question, would you stick your dick in it? Where'd the extra teeth come from if this is the case? Sometimes a parasite can change not only the behavior, but also the physiology of the host. If the anomalous fly laid eggs in her head, chances are there would be holes and lesions from where the eggs hatch. Some of them would be eaten out of her by the flies as a snack. That sounds wrong, I need to re-say that. <laughs> and some of them would be eaten out of her flesh as a snack. If these holes happened to take place near the face, it's possible that the flies manipulated her behavior in order for her to mutilate her own face, snapping her jaw in several places, widening it as much as possible, and putting in more teeth from other consumed corpses so she can most efficiently provide for the brood. Or something silly like that. But hey, I'm just looking at an image and making wild extrapolations based on absolutely nothing just because I wanted to write a horror story about whatever the motherfuck of this thing is. Something scuttling and quick, writhing and clicking under a sheet. White linen slowly stained black with blooming spots of ichor. This was the only information posted accompanying this image of what looks to be a novel anomalous creature. This file was posted by Trevor Henderson, alongside all of the other paranormal evidence on his Instagram that he slaps up there to make the fat bags of dick that the foundation suck a fat bag of dick. The man simply never quits. It has four sets of legs, making for eight total appendages, or at least the ones that are visible. This means that this is likely some sort of arachnid, as the amount of legs combined with their insectoid appearance would suggest some sort of relation to a spider. The creature has an upright posture, suggesting that it's some sort of virus-shaped entity, or a pseudo-humanoid. Like my mattress after a fun night, over its entire upper body is draped what I'm assuming used to be a pristine white sheet. Now, the sheet is leaking blooming spots of ichor. Ichor is defined as a watery discharge from a wound. This could mean a few things. Either A, the thing is injured, B, it's some sort of harbinger of health misfortune, hence it being in a hospital, or C, he's just a leaky dude who likes to spread his bodily fluids around. Who can say they haven't been there? Whatever the stains are, like the rule of thumb with most bedsheet stains, you should make sure to promptly lick it off because you will not get a disease. It also looks like the ichor is dripping and trailing behind the entity. Now, when looking at this creature, I have to try and answer the obvious question. Would you stick your d*** in it? What's under the sheet? Obviously, this creature roots uncannily in the human mind based on the fear of the unknown. If you don't know anything about me, it's that the unknown doesn't scare me, it turns me on. So in order for me to stop being so horny, we have to figure out more about this thing before I get sent back to inhuman resources. The yellowish lighting, wallpapers, and floors look very familiar. This may suggest that whoever has taken the image may have unknowingly clipped into the back rooms. I wanted to mention this because I knew if I don't, someone else will. I could go with this explanation, but seeing as how I made most of this crap up anyways, going with this would feel lazy to me. My theory about this creature is that it is a symbol of disease and death, as I mentioned earlier. These harbingers are quite common in folklore, and it seems that this one may be specifically tailored to situations in modern medicine. The sickly, filth-ridden creature sloppily hidden away from the rest of the world, under a sheet that its disease continues to stain through. Whoever's covering something up did a poor job, as the roach-like appendages imprint an image of decay and pestilence upon all those who cross its path. I believe this creature is a symbol of humanity's current understanding of medicine and death. The morbid is to be hidden away from the rest of the world, but it cannot be, since the morbid is the reason for the medical system in the first place. Death is a part of life, and when we hide it in the shadows, the very same darkness can allow monsters to rise. I don't know, whenever I take myself seriously for too long, I start cringing. But if I was someone who took things seriously, that's what I would say. Okay, so if you believed anything in the past video, you have failed anomalous diversity training and are fired. He's actually just a very strange looking patient with hyperspecific insectoid disease based disabilities. His name is Jeff, he has feelings, and you should feel terrible. If there is a hell, you are going straight the f*** 
to it. Just because someone's ugly doesn't mean they're evil, just most of the time. Only I'm allowed to assume that. Of course, none of this information past the first two sentences of the video actually came from Trevor Henderson. This video is more than nonsensical ramblings of an oddball eyeball and his weird blue dog drinking buddy protege son thing that I'm still not quite sure what he is, but that's besides the point. You know how many bodies turn up down there? Think about how many we don't find. Miles and miles of tunnels under there. Huge cisterns and open rooms where all those bodies might end up tangling together, rotting together. Now, son, let me ask you this. Ever hear of a rat king? This was the only information posted alongside evidence of seemingly anomalous phenomena known as the Rat King. Trevor Henderson slapped this sensitive material on Instagram alongside all the Brazilian butt lifts on my feed. God, finally something I can finish to! Even though this is the only information we have to go off of, Trevor reveals quite a lot in this short paragraph. To understand the human equivalent of a Rat King, we have to understand the original concept of the Rat King. Rat Kings are a collection of rats, usually all dead, whose tails are stuck together in knots, sometimes bound with hair or a sticky substance such as tree sap or semen. Historically, this phenomena is related with Germany, and sometimes the plague. In mythology, there is an elder rat which controls the entirety of the mass, and therefore is the king. There has also been reported squirrel kings, but that's less horrific and more ridiculous. Let's play a fun game. I want you to vote for what animal you think would make the funniest rat king in the comments, and I'll pick the one with the most likes to make in real life. There is an ongoing debate between biologists as to whether or not a group of rats can survive becoming a rat king, or whether or not they would either perish due to infighting or starve and die. Am I the only one who wants to stick this whole thing in a deep fryer, battered up with some beer and flour? A delicious family meal in one convenient package. Now I'm sure this group of scientists are incredibly intelligent, and I'd like to see their explanation for why this giant human rat king is not alive as it hobbles towards them on its still screaming legs. This creature is likely a rat king made up of a combination of both living and dead bodies. The bodies were likely crammed into close quarters somewhere in the sewers. The flesh around their bone became soft and rotten, and as their limbs began to tangle, their weakened brittle bones cracked and contorted, acting like supports holding them together. Nature is just so beautiful sometimes. I mean, not right now, this is an unholy abomination, but I don't know, go pet a kitten. Rancid piss and shit from the sewers would act as tainted glue, sealing both their limbs together and their fate as it crusts over. This would mean that the anomaly anomalous animal would have a putrid smell with an intensity on par with Joe Rogan talking about grizzly bears. <laughs> While this might sound disgusting to you, some internet pervert would probably pay big bucks for that smelly fluid. We can also gauge some information from direct observation of the creature. First we can see that it's in a crouched position. This means that its muscles are functioning, and this creature is most certainly alive, despite the current scientific consensus that rat kings could not survive in the wild. If you're wondering why science is so often wrong, I'd like to remind you that there are people with doctorates that think the earth is flat. It looks as if it lumbers around, using entire human bodies as limbs to clumsily maneuver around the poo-poo tunnels. I find that creatures like this raise a lot of questions. For instance, I have no idea what my own asshole looks like, and sometimes I wonder. Also, since this creature is alive, would it need some form of sustenance? It's likely that it subsists on the waste of the populace of a human metropolis, and probably sewer rats and shit. Since some of the bodies on the Rat King likely die and rot away eventually, it would eventually need to replace its parts. That's where your species comes in. It's likely that the Rat King collects sewer dwellers, urban explorers, and subterranean hobos in order to replenish its decaying limbs. While at first glance the Rat King might look intimidating, I'm sure all those teardrop tattoos just mean that he's an emotionally sensitive and in-touch individual. Charlie was first documented when someone snapped a photo of his initial escape from a meat processing plant. Now, you're probably wondering, what even is a Big Charlie? This creature's DNA analysis revealed that it is a man-made genetic hybrid of both chicken and cow, the ultimate meat product abomination. No longer will my McGangbang have to come from two different animals. 
Its body resembles that of an emaciated cow with its rib cage tightly encased by leathery skin. This creature can reach up to 30 feet or 9 meters tall. Its legs are structured like those of a chicken, and its head has a cow skull shape with a beak-like protrusion for a mouth. Big Chungus's eyes are cloudy and milky white, like those of your friend's really old dog that he insists can still actually stand up, but you're not so sure. These hybrids are still in production around the United States, and their meat as well as other products like milk and eggs are being sold to consumers in America and overseas as well. You can't tell me you didn't already have a suspicion that something was up about your food. Take a bite of a McDonald's hamburger and tell me it tastes anything like a hamburger you make at home. Yeah, I still bought this, f you. Oat milk? Yeah, okay, show me the nipple on an oat. You f***ers have been consuming Big Charlie's this whole time. I'm telling you though, the meat is delicious when you actually prepare it right instead of just mixing it with dog food ingredients like your fast food places. Despite its totally radical entire body mohawk, this entity has never displayed aggressive tendencies towards humans. While he might seem frightening due to his appearance, think about how smart a cow is, and then think about how smart a chicken is. This guy is somewhere in between there. This thing's primary concern is eating things off the ground. I bet you feel about as dumb as him for being scared now, don't you? It's not really all that threatening of a creature compared to the rest of the crap that I drag y'all to. Although, cows do consistently kill humans on a scale that outweighs pretty much any other animal. This creature has one more unexplainable ability, that of fleshy asexual reproduction. This creature drops flesh blobs that will develop into one of multiple forms. If you were Big Charlie, your left boob would fall off and grow legs and become its own sentient creature while you rapidly grew the left boob back. The first of these three forms is a perfect clone of Big Charlie, the second of which is called Lil Nugget. I'm not talking about that vertically challenged Atlanta rapper that fell into a deep fryer. I'm talking about a small amorphously shaped creature with four nubbins it uses to walk around on and two comically large oval eyes. Lil Nuggets act like cockroaches or rats and survive inside human settlements by stealing their food and resources and nesting in their walls. I'd nest in your walls. Aside from the destruction to environments that regular pests create, these are basically harmless, and they can even be domesticated if you feed and take care of them. The lamb is a different story. The lamb is a monstrosity that looks to be made from veins and other vascular structures. Okay, so you know those bodybuilders that have skin so tight that all of their skin looks like veiny dick skin? It's like that big pile of veins, but without the skin. It levitates in the air using some form of telekinesis, but this is just the tip of the iceberg of what it is capable of. It can cause psychic damage to the brains of any creature in its vicinity. This includes psychological slash emotional damage, but it can also just literally burst your gray matter. Make your head go It's also capable of causing all the blood in a creature to instantly clot causing the veins in its body to explode under the pressure of gelatinous blood, causing the skin to become reddish in hue. This creature, like any other cool unknowable horror, is worshipped by a cult of followers. There's also triple question mark nugget, but when people pressed lead paranormal researcher Trevor Henderson for information regarding this new discovery, he kept saying, we don't talk about him. I know what that means, it's either that he's buried in Trevor Henderson's backyard, or he traumatized Trevor to a point he can never recover and his brain made up a bunch of random monsters as a defense mechanism. The faint sound of a powerful heartbeat coming from above. You tilt your head towards the source of the pulsation and see a swollen mass of what looks like hamburger meat dripping an unknown viscous black fluid. It fixates its empty eye sockets on you and makes a garbled pain screech before releasing its grasp and plummeting towards you. Paranormal investigator Trevor Henderson has yet again uploaded anomalous evidence to Twitter despite all Foundation protests. A swift kick to the balls to their supernatural level of bureaucracy is always welcome in my opinion. This evidence takes the form of two images of seemingly related entities, and the caption, meaty. It's very likely that these are just two entities that Trevor encountered and wanted to document, and without much field observations about them otherwise, just said meaty is a fun little wink to the audience. Which is pretty ableist because some people can't wink. These creatures have faces resembling human skulls, seemingly made out of a combination of bone, teeth, and skinless, red flesh tendrils. The second documented creature also displays an open ribcage, which means that there's likely more complex structures in both of them that aren't just earthworm-looking hamburger meat. Their shape, while amorphous, is consistent in a few key aspects. They seem to be suspended in the air by a variable amount of slender limbs, and unless those entities are stationary, it could be surmised that they would move via suspensory movement. 
similar to species of non-anomalous primates. Tracking prey from power lines, trees, rooftops, 5G towers, parking lights, that bridge that I took a dump under before taking the perfect opportunity to strike. It could also, as previously mentioned, be a stationary ambush predator. This would mean that it would wait above human settlements, suspended along their own structures, for an unsuspecting individual to cross under them. At that moment, they would let go and drop onto the victim, subsequently latching on and repelling back up to safety, ensnaring the prey in a web of flesh, consuming them slowly from the comfort of their meaty spider web. The creature from the first image looks to be swollen, which could suggest that it is in the midst of actively digesting a prey item. I wouldn't want to be under that thing when it takes a supernatural human-sized shit all over the sidewalk. I assume these things are dangerous just based on how creepy they look, but I have no concrete evidence. He could just eat plants or like fucking gravel too, I guess. Hell, he could be a used car salesman for all I know. I have two fucking pictures. The first one kind of reminds me of a living cut-off bull testicle. You guys ever have Rocky Mountain oysters? I haven't, but they're on the list. Also, some may note that the pictures look as though they fit together. And while I'm not ruling that possibility out, some key factors lead me to believe otherwise. First off, they have different tones in their flesh, and key differing factors in their morphology suggesting that they are unique individuals. Also, I put one on top of the other and it didn't fit, so I don't know, man. You try it. If any researcher watching has any ideas about how these creatures are related more than just being the same species, leave your findings below. One may also question the text that looks as if it reads A1 behind the second creature, and how the background of these images look as though they could be in some sort of metal room. While I initially thought it was just a cloudy backdrop, this could suggest something else. This may lead some to believe that it's being contained in a facility, seeing as how they usually label and categorize their anomalies. And that may be correct. Some may think it's the SCP Foundation, some may think it's some other shadow government, everyone's got one nowadays. I don't think so though. We've uncovered something much more devious. I believe that we now know an integral piece in the mystery of how they make A1 steak sauce. The Smile Room was discovered on July 27, 2006, when three teenagers found an abandoned amusement park in Canada, also known as America's Hat. In proper form, two broke in while one kept lookout. Or maybe he was just afraid. Foreshadowing, being a puss served him well. Eventually, he stopped being a baby and made his way inside the complex. There was not a single sign of his friends, but he did manage to find one of his buddy's phones outside a crappy looking locked door covered in some sort of clear goo. Testing revealed this goo to be eerily similar to human saliva, suggesting possible sloppy toppy. Upon opening this friend's phone, he found this photo. The authorities got involved after seeing this image, and an investigation was launched to find the missing people. Like the majority of the times that I shamelessly slide into DMs of random alt girls on TikTok, this was destined to fail from the beginning. As when they got to the location and opened the door, there was just a brick wall behind it. The biology of the smile room remains mysterious. Some believe it's a large mollusk-like creature that takes root inside of buildings, only to shift locations when it gathers too much attention or prey becomes too scarce, whereas others believe it's capable of warping the fabric of reality to create a gateway at the doorframe, creating a fake room of sorts. The obvious question, would you fuck it? What the fuck is a smile room? Side note, it's really hot in here and I'm completely naked while recording this. The smile room is a creature that takes root inside of ramshackle buildings. It places the front of its maw on the inside of the doorframe. This mouth looks strikingly similar to a pair of human teeth and gums, only rotated so that it operates vertically. The teeth look weirdly perfectly maintained. Hey, I mean, this is one hell of a first impression. Just saying. If my face looked like that sh**, you know I'd f floss. Behind these chompers is a fleshy room that looks similar to the inside of a human mouth. Now, the majority of humans in this situation would be like, oh, that room has large teeth and a cavernous throat. I'm gonna go away from it. But there's also the section that would go, oh, that room has large teeth and a cavernous throat. I'm gonna go directly inside of it. If an idiot enters this room, a few seconds following this, the jaw will snap shut and the victim will be trapped inside and swallowed by the floor into a system of intestines. These intestines are filled with a weak digestive acid that will dissolve the prey over a series of days. I think it'd actually just die of boredom. The interior of the room is basically a fleshy escape room, complete with puzzles. For some reason, if the victim can solve all the puzzles before being digested, they'll get to leave. This would be like if you swallowed that mousetrap board game and then a bunch of spiders, and if they got it to work, you'd vomit them all up. What the hell am I talking about again? Some claim that this entity is capable of snagging victims with its tongue and bringing it inside. A 
requiring both a human victim and a sexual misconduct charge in one fell swoop. The rabbit hole goes deeper, however, as lead paranormal researcher Trevor Henderson revealed more about the Smile Room. He released an image called Smile Room Host, which was a humanoid entity with a vertical row of teeth spanning the entirety of the height of its body. Some theorize that this Smile Room Host is a juvenile form of the creature going through its awkward teenage phase, whereas others believe the Smile Room is capable of infecting humans and using them as hosts as a hunting strategy. Since the room does not immediately eat these humans, it suggests that it has intelligence enough to understand delayed gratification over instant satisfaction. That means that it is smarter than me most of the time, and probably you as well. As more and more evidence began to surface about the Smile Room, a group of people created a vorophile cult where they sacrificed themselves and sometimes unwilling victims to the Smile Room as a tribute, but mostly because they get off to it. This isn't just me slandering them. They won't shut the hell up about it regardless of who they're around. I don't let my cult talk to them. Not because of the sacrificing people thing, just because they're f***ing weird. What me and John found on the beach that summer, July 15th, 1995. This was the only information posted alongside this image depicting what looks to be a possibly anomalous creature. This image was uploaded to Twitter by anomalous investigator Trevor Henderson, who basically just takes a big steamy dump on the Foundation's rules and regulations as part of his morning routine at this point. While this isn't a ton of information, we can still gauge a lot about the nature of this creature by examining the photo and caption presented. It looks as though this evidence was taken from a family photo album, and the writer of the photo's caption seems to be completely unaware that they've stumbled upon a possibly preternatural creature. Just another Tuesday, finding a demonic sea cucumber for this oblivious fuck. The creature's anatomy looks almost nonsensical. From what we can see, it has two mouths, one on its side, and one on its head where it's supposed to be. Two eyes, and what appears to be an additional sensory organ that might be used for smell, but it could also detect electrical signals like some species of shark. It's important to note that this creature may have the same setup on the other side of its body, if it's bilaterally symmetrical, meaning that it would have three total mouths, four total eyes, and an additional receptor. Although, this goober looks like a Cronenberg Build-A-Bear, so chances are, all rules go out the window with Lovecraft's platypus over here. The photo is blurry, but it looks like on the tail end of the body, it has a long flipper. The creature's corpse is obviously not in great condition, waterlogged to shit and gored beyond belief. Chances are, there are aspects of this creature's anatomy that were lost to these processes. You know, I've actually heard that opening up your midsection just like a little bit is actually good for you. It's nice to feel the breeze on your bare organs. Really let your insides breathe, you feel me? Because it looks like it went through the garbage disposal, we can't know if it had something on its side, like a flipper or an arm or a dick. Although, we know it has bones now, I guess. I was just gonna assume that anyway. One theory that may make sense for this organism is that it could lay flat like one of those stupid pancake fishes. While the multiple mouth holes might look pointless and stupid, and they might be, they also could suggest a generalist lifestyle adaptation. It could use its side mouth to feed on particles and critters from above like an ambush predator, but still have the option to chase down, kill, and consume faster moving or smarter prey because of its forward-facing set of jaws. Nature is just so beautiful sometimes. I mean, not right now, this makes me want to kill the last remaining member of a critically endangered species out of spite, but I don't know, make two bugs fight or something. Now I know we're all concerned with what this creature is, but I think we're asking the wrong questions. If this life follows the same rules as all known Earth life, it would be the product of evolution by natural selection. Question is, what kind of environment would lead to the evolution of a creature such as this? Whatever the hell kind of selective pressures bred this thing looked to be incredibly intense. Snakes didn't evolve venom that can kill creatures 10 times their size to fend off mice. Sharks didn't evolve multiple rows of jagged teeth to eat and defend themselves from guppies. And whatever the fuck this phallic thing is didn't evolve two mouths full of razor blades to eat shrimp, damn it! You think this washed up sea dildo is scary? Imagine the creatures this thing needs to defend itself from. This brings up my next question. Look at the large wound on its body. I can't spot another wound on the creature's body, and that's not how natural decomposition works. This means that this was likely an injury sustained while this creature was alive. Something as frightening as this would be an apex predator, right? You'd think, but if you look at the gash on its torso, not that one for long enough, you may notice that it resembles a bite mark. If those are the size of the jaws, what took the bite? Stepping out of the bar onto the dimly lit street, you notice a man walking with a strange, jerky motion. 
his body twisted and deformed. You approach the seemingly drunken stranger and pipe up a concerned, Hello? The man whips around, his face a writhing mass of angry hornets buzzing and swarming in a frenzied dance. You stumble backward, but it's too late. Paranormal investigator Trevor Henderson has recently uploaded an image depicting what looks to be a novel anomalous entity. This image was the only information posted about this creature, other than the caption, Wasp Breath. Usually people submit paranormal evidence to the foundation for approval, but I prefer it much more when Trevor submits it to Instagram so a spook can pop up in between all of the butts. Scary and horny, the two original human emotions. Even though the information alongside this creature was minimal, we can still find out quite a lot about it by examining its physiology. What should we start with? What should we start with? Oh, maybe the massive wasp nest it has instead of a face. The hoodie and disembodied lower jaw seem to signify that this at one point was a human being. But the giant fucking wasp's nest it has instead of a head signifies that this has something to do with wasps. Wasps are split up into two groups, social wasps and solitary wasps. Social wasps are likely the ones that have taken root inside this poor young man's cranium, feeding off of his brain like an old man slurping the brainstem out of a succulent fish head or some shit. More specifically, the nest structure, which sats where his thinky meat once sat, signifies that this is a new anomalous species of paper wasp. Anyone who spends enough time around wasps Wasp nests can tell you that emergency room visits are expensive. Like what happens when you call an exterminator in Ohio. You're the one who gets exterminated. Fun fact, did you know that many species of parasitic wasps lay their eggs inside of other insects? The larvae can then release chemicals that change the insect's behavior to make them act in a manner that produces the ideal environment for the growth of the larva. Well, that wasn't very fun, but it was a fact. I believe that this man may have fallen victim to a species of anomalous insect that physiologically resembles a regular paper wasp, and builds a similar style of nest, slowly consuming and subsequently replacing the head of their host. Oh god, I'm gonna come! How this human pistachio shell moves is a mystery, but I have a theory that this is a specific type of anomalous wasp with the ability to replace the neural network provided by a brain with a nest in order to pilot the corpse like a sock puppet. In this system, the nest and its occupants would act as the brain, conveying information to one another, bringing a whole new meaning to the concept of a hive mind. After his whole entire brain got eaten by a wasp nest, he was less concerned with human things like purpose and family, and more concerned with wasp things like chewing up wood pulp to make hexagons and shitting eggs in other living beings. While at this point, I feel like I'm pointing at everything and saying anomalous mind controlling parasite, there's literally a fucking beehive where his head should be. I mean, come on, how obvious does it need to be? This is not only a coincidence stemming from my own lazy writing, but in fact, it may be tipping us off to a larger scale happening. It may be that a genus of anomalous mind-controlling insects has found a new host, humanity. Paper wasps usually construct their nests out of a mix of wood pulp and saliva. Since they're usually constructing it in trees, there's plentiful wood to go around. When you're constructing your nest in a human face, however, wood pulp isn't as plentiful. Chances are, something heretofore unknown about this species allows them to take bone, and possibly flesh, and combine it with their saliva in order to produce a similar substance. Nature is just so beautiful sometimes. I mean, not right now, this makes me want to Kermit sewer slide. I don't know, like a slug. As is consistent with Trevor's research, there's no indication of where this insect species resides. Not in the photo, not in the post itself. So I don't know, I guess you all have to be afraid. Sucks to suck. But hey, I'm just looking at an image and making wild extrapolations because I wanted to make a spooky video. It's a fucking wasp nest, man. Screw you, I know I'm right about this disgusting monster. Please stop making fun of me. I have a skin condition. New evidence of an anomalous insect species has been making the rounds on the internet. This image was first uploaded to social media platforms by anomalous investigator Trevor Henderson, alongside the phrase, wasp nest. I like how when Trevor runs out of toilet paper, he uses the rules the foundation established for sharing paranormal evidence, cause that shit ain't worth the paper it's printed on. While this might not seem like a lot to go on, we can use this photo in combination with the caption and other evidence we've seen previously to paint a more complete picture of the beastie we see here. I believe that this may be the same species of anomalous parasitic wasp that Trevor documented in the piece, wasp Wasp breath. wasp breath depicted an individual that had their entire head replaced by a wasp nest, save for his lower jaw. He was infected by an anomalous species of parasitic wasps that use biological material like meat and bone, as well as regular wood pulp, to make wasp nests. One of these wasps laid eggs in his brain. As the eggs hatched, 
they secreted chemicals to make the man behave in a manner ideal for the construction of a nest, and the wasp slowly overtook the function of his brain, the man began to change. Rather than caring about human things like finding and fulfilling a life's purpose, he started thinking about bug monster things like hunting and killing humans in order to provide more biomass for the wasps to expand the nest structure. As for the individual depicted in Wasp's Nest, the infestation is in a much more advanced stage. Atop the figure's spindly neck lies multiple large wasp nest structures combined in a brain coral-like mass. This person likely fell victim to the same insect species, but had a more severe infection for a much longer time, and had more biomass to build a larger nest. Using the flesh and bone of the initial victim, and then others it encountered and subsequently consumed, it created a network of nests much larger than any other documented case of this preternatural parasitoid wasp. Nature is just so beautiful sometimes. I mean, not right now, this makes me want to burn down the last remaining rainforest, but I don't know, snort a worm or something. The entity's body below the head has almost completely atrophied. Many of the organs and bones likely recycled into the large tumor-like mass that appears in place of the head. The creature's torso appears to be suspended in the air by the nest. While the mechanism of flight is still unconfirmed, it's possible that thousands of wasps are grasping onto the top of the massive nest, using their little legs and all working together to keep it aloft. You could learn a thing or two from those wasps, I tell you. A wasp nest is basically paper, so even one made out of flesh and bone paper probably wouldn't be that heavy. Alongside looking like an overfilled dumpling, the structure on its head affords this entity some new abilities. For starters, the nest is at least five times the size of the original example of this infestation. And because of this, it has five times more wasps. Rather than a painful deterrent to anything that would fuck with the hosts, the wasps are now an active hunting tool and accosting new prey from a distance, swarming a victim and overwhelming their system with enough venom to kill even the fattest of men. It also boasts an advanced intelligence in comparison to its one nest cousin, as the wasp nest structure replacing its neurology has more space and drones to process information. Or some shit. Also, all the other insect monster ladies find his bulbous, unkempt wasp nest filled head sexy. Oh, so when I flirt while my head swells to the point of almost bursting and leaks a honey consistency liquid as bugs crawl out of my eyes, nose, and mouth, I get pepper sprayed and then jailed. But when he does it, he's hot double standards. Multiple of these wasp nest network humanoids have been seen congregating in forested areas with a low density of animals. Some anomalous investigators theorize that they may be attempting to combine these colonies into a megastructure made of multiple humanoids. Putting their heads together, huh? Huh? Fuck all of you, I don't care, you're still watching. The possible ramifications of this anomalous wasp megastructure and the probable hyper-intelligent hive mind sentience that would emerge from the nest and its army are unknown. But I don't know, maybe they'll be friendly. You were a good sport listening to this cocaine-fueled rambling, so I'm going to ignore that big old problem and take you out for ice cream. Yup, really. Recently, new evidence of what looks to be a novel supernatural creature has been posted on the internet. This image was recently posted on multiple social media platforms, alongside the phrase, stunned in the headlights. This anomalous evidence was uploaded by one Trevor Henderson, a paranormal investigator who tends to wipe his ass with the rules and regulation the Foundation establishes for the sharing of anomalous media. Gotta love it. Even though there's very limited information about this critter, we can still use the uploaded media to gauge some ideas about what exactly the fuck it is. Let's start with what we can clearly see, its physical characteristics. On the front of its head are four visible eyes and three visible noses. Its eyes are a milky white, like your friend's cat that they have to put like a weird paste in its eyeballs every day or they'll dry up and fall out. It has one long slit of a mouth, with what looks to be multiple points that would be a philtrum in the human being. It's possible that these sensory organs loop around the back of its distended soup dumpling looking ass head, so it may have much more than four eyes and three noses. Now I want soup dumplings. Please one viewer at home, put soup dumplings in an envelope and send it to me in the mail. The skin on its face looks clammy and pale, almost like a wet, greasy clay. I feel like if I threw a heavy object at it, it would make like a squelchy dent and just kind of stick inside. Long story short, this thing looks gross and slimy and I both don't want to touch it and am curious as to if I could fuck it. Um. Cognitive dissonance is a real and powerful thing. Its body looks to be a shadow, or some sort of ghostly figure, with the ends of its legs disappearing before they would supposedly end in feet. Jesus, I can't even say the fucking word without you weirdos frothing at the mouth. The lack of a physical form on its body suggests that this creature is some sort of apparition. By apparition, I don't necessarily mean ghost, although this could be the case. I mean that this creature may not interact with the physical plane as you do. It may be capable of phasing through surfaces or objects, or disappearing completely. I don't know dude, I'm making this up based only on a photo, so your guess is as good as mine. 
It actually is quite possible that this creature is some sort of ghost. It has a ghostly tail that looks similar to that of a white-tailed buck. Side note, y'all ever hear the story of Tail Girl? Anyways, this person was a weirdo, and they wore a tail, in public, like a lot. That's not the weird part though, it is the weird part, but it's not the weird part. This one time, someone ran up behind her and pulled the tail out, and she screamed as if she was in terrible pain, like, like someone hit her leg with a baseball bat. I saw the shiny metal glint of an egg-shaped ball at the end of the tail. At that moment, everyone knew why she always sat so weird. I don't know why I brought that up, but I was cursed with this information, so now you are too. Ignorance is bliss and I just stole that from you. If this creature was some sort of ghost, why would it be wandering the earth? And why would it appear here? The four-legged structure of this critter and how it's appearing in front of a car suggests that it has some sort of relation to roadkill. Perhaps this is a mauled and distended representation of an animal that met its fate on the side of the road. One may wonder if it's related to the god of roadkill, another Trevor Henderson creation. And to that I say, maybe, but not everything is the goddamn Marvel Cinematic Universe, so shut up! The name stunned in the headlights also suggests a relation to roadkill. A common phrase for someone who looks scared or doesn't know their next move is looking like a deer in headlights. It is with this that I state my hypothesis about this creature is that it's either the ghost of Christmas past of a deer that got all smushed up by a semi-truck, or some sort of Kirkland brand god of roadkill. Without more information, all we can do is guess. I take that liberty to guess to make up a bunch of shit that removes the whole fear of the unknown from this beautiful work. That's right, weirdy. You're just a big dumb animal to me. Guess I shouldn't have been hitting so many deer and toddlers with my car for fun. I regret nothing. It's the drunk crashers who get caught that get us in trouble. The Feated King is a cognito hazard image that manifests an aggressive skeletal entity of the same name. This entity has a few strands of hair that it desperately combs over in a sad attempt to claim that it's under 30,000 years old. He also wears a crown that seemingly rises out of the bone on top of the skull itself. This image was originally a painting. When someone would view this art, the Feated King entity would emerge from the canvas, grabbing the victim and dragging them into a pocket-sized dimension within the artwork. In this fun-sized hell, the victim will be submerged into a sea of maggots until there is nothing left but bone. If there is any flesh left, it looks like the skin on the knee of that kid that won't let his injuries heal because he keeps picking the scabs off to eat them. Some researchers believe that the Feated King just wants more skeleton friends. While he sounds fearsome, you can just avoid him by staying out of arm's reach or not looking at him at all. When someone, whether it was a deranged lunatic looking to end humanity or an idiot that just didn't get close enough to die and posted it on Instagram, took a photo and uploaded it to the internet Internet, the properties followed. This turned what was a vaguely threatening piece of canvas that you could incapacitate by facing towards the wall into an omnipotent being capable of tracing down and destroying any human with any semblance of connection to the modern world. It started to spread itself in numerous newly created social media accounts and even edit the files and settings on devices to turn the image into the home screen, signifying that this entity was conscious and wanted to kill as many people as possible. I actually have the original image saved on my hard drive as it's a lot easier to send an email than it is to put a hit out on someone. Just remember, if you fuck with me, I'll kill you with only a meme. The image I am using to depict this entity in the video has been modified for your safety. I'd show the real one to you, but then who would watch my videos? See, it's a lot less easy to keep this spooky skeleton man at arm's reach when he can occupy a device that's designed for use in your hands. The one hilarious thing about the Feated King is that it manifests with size in respect to the device that it comes from. So if it does happen to come from your phone, it's gonna be a teeny tiny little guy trying to murder you. Adorable. However, the Feated King is always incredibly strong regardless of its size and is able to pull a full-grown man through a computer monitor via brute force, even if limbs need to be severed in the process. If some psycho rents an electronic billboard in Town Hall, things are gonna get real messy real fast, and I will be watching one giant arm's distance away with popcorn and beer.
Bridge worms are mysterious ambush predators located across the majority of the North American continent. These worms are often discovered by unlucky urban explorers that stick their nose inside the wrong place at the wrong time, like that one incident with the butthole. These creatures have a long worm-like body covered in a layer of sickly-looking gray skin with a waxy shine to it. They have two large arms protruding from each side, which they use for dragging themselves along using walls of tunnels like a lubed-up man crawling quickly across a slip and slide. They also use these arms to secure prey and bring it inside their face holes for consumption. The bridge worm usually resides in bridges, tunnels, sewers, subways, abandoned buildings, and rarely in natural caves. Like you and I, this creature very much enjoys slippery holes. This creature preys upon the majority of large North American fauna, but has a tendency to reside in man-made areas and target humans. It's theorized that this predator not only targets humans, but has evolved over millions of years to favor humans as prey. It's thought that this creature needs the large mass of gray matter that is most present in human brains. Evidence for this evolutionary relationship can be seen in its false face adaptation. Kinda like dealing with someone on the street handing out their quote-unquote free mixtape, or a girl who's only on Tinder to promote her OnlyFans, you shouldn't be fooled by this false face. Its gray skin opens up just under the chin of the creature, creating a retractable flap. This flap has a fake, vaguely humanoid face on it. When ambushing its prey, it retracts this flap to reveal its true face, which is a blood-red skeletal face eerily similar in bone structure to a human skull. While it was theorized that this was designed to fool humans as a manipulation of their hard-coded facial recognition patterns in their brains, this theory falls apart when you realize that most humans are smart enough to know it's not a person if it's a giant worm with an uncanny valley face. Keyword most. Instead, I theorize that it is not designed to trick humans, but instead to pique their curiosity, taking advantage of the human's natural proclivity to seek knowledge even if it puts them in danger. What's that saying? Curiosity killed the cat, and also that transient, that taxi driver, that paranormal investigator. As they age, their faces get more and more human-like, and some of them attach themselves inside of their habitat like some sort of horrible roadway snail. Another adaptation that suggests the bridge worm specializes in human hunting is that it oozes a thick slime. This not only lubricates its body to slide through tunnels, but it also serves to make the road incredibly slippery, causing many more accidents. Numerous corporations have captured and farmed these worms to milk them of their lubricant and sell them as intercourse aids worldwide. When the slime freezes in the winter, this accident rate skyrockets. After causing a car crash, this creature will rip the doors from the vehicle and pull the prey out of the car and devour it like my rabbi did with my foreskin after I was circumcised. The largest recorded bridge worm on record was over 1,500 feet, and was the culprit responsible for some of the numerous New York railway transit disappearance from 1994 to 1998. Bridge worms usually keep to isolated areas to avoid detection by human masses. Nothing on your planet is more dangerous than a big group of humans under groupthink. Although, when food is scarce, the worms will sometimes relocate in search of more, sometimes across vast distances. There have been a few rare instances of bridge worms entering cities and large towns. For example, the most infamous incident in 1998 in which a bridge worm followed the train tracks from rural New York directly into Grand Central, consuming railway workers, drunken humans, and homeless street performers in the subway only to be cut in half by an express train from Connecticut before it could reach the high population transit center. I actually witnessed this, but in the moment, after the night I had, I wasn't sure if I actually saw a train cut a giant worm with human arms in half, or I was just a bit too gone and needed some sleep. What is strange is that there are no evolutionary trees which the bridge worm would fit into, as it has no known species relatives. How the bridge worm came into existence is a complete mystery. Some say it's related to snakes or worms, some say it was created in a laboratory, some, as humans always do, say it's got something to do with the occult or the paranormal. Examining its genetic lineage is like going on TikTok. Rarely have I opened TikTok and I was like, yeah, that was a valuable use of my time. Most of the time I just open it to post and spend like 15 minutes and I'm staring at memes and thirst traps and I'm I'm like, shit. I've been tricked. What the hell am I talking about again? I would advise against searching for the bridge worm due to the fact that you're their primary source of food that millions of years of evolution have bred them to be the perfect ambush predator for you idiot. I decided to message my associate and take this investigation into my own hands. The following is the message log leading up to the expedition. Yo, where's the abandoned house? In the woods. I need some footage. We need to find the bridge worm, motherfucker. This guy, where? Oh, you're asking me? I'm down to do that tonight. Blair Witch Project. Yeah, I'm asking you, lol. We need to find the fuck bridge worms. Redacted. If we believe hard enough and get high enough, it will be real. Hey man, you don't gotta tell me twice. Lift today? I'm glad you understand the importance of this matter. Also down. Lift today, dinner, vodka, wander into the woods.
The Sea Eater is an eyeless, ocean-dwelling creature of unknown length. While the Sea Eater is far too large to fit into any body of water other than the deep ocean, this still doesn't mean that you should feel safe on the toilet. On each side, there are massive limbs that resemble arms, except with webbed extremities. This creature navigates on sonar alone, and it's thought that it's responsible for the famous yet unidentified bloop recording. Shut the fuck up, Animal Planet. It's not fucking mermaids. Anyways, if humans were smart, they'd just nuke this big stupid fucker with sonar and get it over with. Get rid of all the whales too while you're at it. This creature consumes anything it comes across, including but not limited to small to large sea fauna ranging from clouds of plankton to pods of whales, ocean vessels such as boats, cruise ships, aircraft carriers and submarines, and other ocean megafauna such as the Marianas Trench Megalodon population. The tip of this creature's gaping maw is just above 32,000 feet high when it rarely breaches the surface. This trait gets even more unsettling when one realizes that airplanes fly at around 30,000 feet. One of the rare direct surface encounters with this creature was found in the black box of an airplane that was swallowed and found full of skeletons in a giant legendary undersea turd. It's thought that this creature moves by dragging itself along the seafloor with its giant uncanny valley arms. While this behemoth seems like it would be slow if it was dragging its belly across the floor like a morbidly obese slug, it can actually reach speeds of up to 575 miles per hour. Hour. The probably 10 year old on the fandom writes that it's faster, but how am I supposed to make this that stupidly overpowered when the document reads, Sea Eater once fought Slithering Doom and Sea Eater 1. It eats anything even large size which helps it to catch flying creatures like manta and flying vehicles. Undersea it eats creatures plankton and even feed on vertebrates and invertebrates. He can eat every ocean ever. You dare question my flawlessly written lore? I am the Sea Eater. Consumer of the deep. Nice to meet you, C Cup. I'm as fuck, consumer of Red Bull vodkas. Why aren't you freaking out? Hey, Eater, if you saw my search history and learned what I got off to, you'd have nightmares for weeks. Amazon makes it like way too easy to buy like a literal machete as a child. And I know because I did it. If you thought the Sea Eater was powerful, the World Eater is so powerful that by comparison, it makes the Sea Eater look like that daddy long legs that I pulled all the legs off as a kid and then cried when I realized what I had done to that poor vibrating gray ball. The World Eater is a gargantuan mass consisting of a main body and face and an uncountable amount of tendrils and insectoid limbs stemming from it. At the front of this body, there is a human-like mouth with insect-like mandibles stemming from each side. Look at this big smile. Such a happy guy when it's his snack time. Just above this gaping maw, the surface of the face is dotted with dozens of milky white eyes of various sizes. The body segment also extends backwards into a tail-like structure for what looks to be eternity, but is likely just a few thousand miles. The World Eater, as its name suggests, eats worlds, idiot. This creature will feast on an entire planet, leaving nothing behind, and then it will simply move on to the next. Its endless appetite has consumed many solar systems, and will consume many more as it drifts throughout the cosmic void searching for its next meal. It's likely that the World Eater will eventually encounter and devour the Sea Eater. What is this, a crossover episode? And also you and everyone you know. This one kind of reminds me of the Junji Ito manga. What's it called? Hellstar Ramina. Yeah, this whole creature gives me a lot of Lovecraft vibes too. You know what's weird? A lot of people think that Lovecraft was squeamish towards sex, and you can see this in his work. Like how he made a fertility god, the equivalent to a horrific sentient fleshy termite egg sac hive full of gods. If you're a true literary scholar, you can look past this and realize that H.P. Lovecraft definitely had a fetch for sticking his penis into random insect hives and getting it all bit up and sh**. What the hell is it talking about again? This is the cum eater. It, e it eats cum the end. Cartoon Cat is a tall, slender, anthropomorphic Morphic black cat-like creature with cartoonish proportions and features. It has white soulless eyes with black pupils and white gloves similar to that of Control the Entire World Mouse. Like fans of FNAF, furries that want to fuck slashers are the most common victims of Cartoon Cat. Some believe that Cartoon Cat was sent as punishment for humanity's anthropomorphic sexualized cartoon representations of animals. Oh yeah, and his teeth are consistently stained with blood. When pressed as to why, he said don't worry about it. So I'm not gonna worry about it. The creature does not usually display typical feet, instead having sharp points at the ends of their legs. Finally, a solution for those who have both feet and knife fetishes. Cartoon Cat can change its form, size, and body at will. Its arms and legs can extend almost indefinitely, allowing it to reach high windows where you sleep with ease. The creature's limbs can squash and stretch like that of a typical 1930s rubber hose era cartoon. Except without all the racist parts that make everybody uncomfortable, his entire body seems to be malleable as if it were made of some sort of solidified goo. 
The creature seems to be emulating Felix the Cat, a cartoon that ended around the 1930s. In the Felix the Cat Wikipedia article, it details the struggles and decline of the show's creator, which is incredibly sad, right? At the time of Googling Felix the Cat, I had not read this article. And I scrolled down to why did Felix the cat end? And it said, he slumped into an alcoholic depression. His health rapidly declined and his memory began to fade. He could not even cash checks to Mesmer because his signature was reduced to a mere scribble. He died in 1933. But my dumbass thought it was referring to Felix the cat. And I was like, they wrote that in the show? On a drunk AMA Trevor did on his Twitter, he revealed that Cartoon Cat loves to commit violent atrocities. Oh, to be drunk on an AMA, Trevor's doing it it right. He has not revealed much about Cartoon Cat, likely because he knows the truest fear is fear of the unknown. Cartoon Cat is considered to be so dangerous that other monsters avoid areas that he tends to frequent. Not me though, this cat is just a big pussy just like every other. It's theorized that Cartoon Cat has unknown metaphysical abilities that allow him such power. Cartoon Cat, and any other cartoon monster for that matter, can take the distorted form of almost any animal. But since dogs, mice, and cats are the animals that usually come to mind when cartoons are mentioned, these are the forms that are most most often used. Cartoon Cat used to take the form of Cartoon Mouse, before the only entity more powerful than itself threatened litigation. This brings us to the entity of Cartoon Dog. While some believe that Cartoon Dog is a separate entity completely different from Cartoon Cat, others are convinced that they are the same creature, and that it just changes forms very often. Since their traits are all basically the same as far as I see it, the answer is very obviously that it doesn't fucking matter. If the majority of the population focuses on a new cartoon character, Cartoon Cat may take their form. And and if it makes Cartoon AZFK, I'll see it the fucking court. Based on this info, it's likely that Cartoon Cat took its form around the 30s and looked quite different before the advent and popularization of animation. Trevor has gone so far as to say that these creatures understand morality and quite enjoy doing the most horrific of things they possibly can. So basically, it's like that kid that's edgy for edginess sake. Oh, you don't like that? I am the aberration, the absence of all. You wanna go, Bendy the Ink Machine's house cat? I'll have you fucking neutered. Oh wait, I don't even have to, because the quote unquote family friendly channels have already done that for me. Okay, ouch man. I won't actually cut too deep. I did unsavory things just to survive. I'm done participating in your terrible video. Invasive species. Alien apex aggressors able to outcompete any native animal in the ecosystem. Recently, there has been a rash of sightings of strange and uncanny birds. Anomalous researcher Trevor Henderson has uploaded several images depicting this new invasive species that's been devastating the continental United States. Usually, anomalous evidence is confiscated for approval, but Trevor just sticks him up on Instagram. You gotta respect the absolute balls on this man. These creatures resemble regular birds, usually owls, but with no eyes or beak and instead a frighteningly large human-like smile and a set of unkempt teeth. Instead of the owl, it has a range of speech patterns, many of which sound like human vocalizations. Words, moans, and the screams of a person being ripped apart by several owls with human teeth are among the wide range of noises this species is capable of making. Unlike other species who just repeat what they've been told like parrots or political news anchors, it seems like these birds actually understand the meaning of the human language they sometimes vocalize using it to communicate or frighten hikers. Your mother was a hamster and your father smelt of elderberry. While this invasive species typically hunts in a similar fashion to owls, tracking prey solo and capturing it on its own, they also display a social strategy unique to their own species. These creatures will gather together in groups of 5 to 20 and swarm larger animals, overwhelming them with sheer numbers and stripping them down to the bone as quickly as a school of piranha. Everyone's gotta stay in shape to run from the piranha birds. I know I'm healthy because the doctor took my blood and my pee and then switched them. When I was a kid, I always wondered why the doctors needed my pee and a small part of me thought they drank it. Large collections of bones, both belonging to humans and animals, have been found in abnormally large clusters of owl pellet droppings in the area of these creatures. Oh.
This may be enough evidence to show that they all poop together as friends. In areas where these invasive species appear, the regular bird variety of this species quickly decline in number, almost as if these creatures target the species they're meant to emulate. This is also backed up by the significantly disproportionate amount of owl bones found in the pellet piles. While this species is most commonly reported mimicking owls, if there are none native to the area, they will select another bird. After clearing every potential suspect for bird bestiality, an investigation was launched into the genetic genetics of this strange specimen. As suspected, there was a combination of both human and avian DNA in each sample found. Even stranger than a human breastfeeding a squirrel. It is unknown where these hybrids have been coming from, but some other phenomena could shed light on the situation. Trevor uploaded another strange avian sample with two beaks and no eyes on his Instagram page as well. This provides further evidence to the theory that these creatures come from some sort of man-made source. A prototype, if you will. Even though human scientists are consistently ready, willing, able, and mentally unstable, the man-made theory is not universally accepted. Some believe that these creatures came from natural, or potentially preternatural, anomalous evolutionary processes. These are not the only strange avian varieties that Trevor has cataloged. For example, he recently posted a picture of this bird-like specimen called the Mocking Nightfisher, displaying a miniature human face. <laughs> These photos are the only evidence of this specific species, and little is known about them other than the fact that it likely has human DNA and probably came from the same source as the toothy birds. There is one more piece that looks as if it fits into this weird bird mouth puzzle, but it still leaves questions unanswered. For example, would you stick your dick in it? Trevor posted an image depicting an owl-like creature with two lamprey mouths for eyes. He titled it Pacific Northwestern Forest Lamprey, stating that it uses carrion as an ambulatory host to propagate and feed. Translation, this worm-like creature hijacks dead owls to fly around, make sexy times, and hunt. Just know if your partner dies and you want one last time with them, go with the rhyme. Shove lampreys in their eyes and brains to say goodbye with a bedsheet stain. What the hell am I talking about again? It is unconfirmed whether or not the invasive species are related to these creatures or if they occurred naturally, but what is certain from the evidence he presents is that there is an increasing number of anomalous avian predators cropping up in multiple ecosystems. Oh. Hey, don't throw your garbage down here! Locals call her the hag, which she hates, though she can see why. She's a humanoid hagfish that looks like a decayed waterlogged corpse. She's been around for a long time. She wasn't always like this. She floats face down and waits for people to jump in her pond to drown. This was the only information posted alongside these two images of this newly discovered entity dubbed the Hag. This creature was first reported by the preternatural investigator Trevor Henderson, and in his trademark style, he posted full uncensored anomalous evidence just spread eagle on Twitter. What a badass. While this is the only info we have to draw off, it does still illuminate quite a bit about this mysterious entity. She's described as a humanoid hagfish, so we can take a look at the non-humanoid analog to understand more about the hag's physiology. I feel bad calling her a hag. You look like an Agatha. I'm calling you Agatha. The hagfish is one of the oldest living fish on the planet. It has a skull but no spine, and tiny holes run the length of its body for breathing and secreting a thick, mucus-like slime. Its face sports a jawless mouth lined with rows of razor-sharp jagged teeth which it uses for slicing through dead fish. These teeth are attached to two bony plates that it can manipulate to tear into corpses. Yummy! The hagfish also has a single nostril which it uses to find dead animals to feed on. You know if you get past the eating dead bodies and being covered in a viscous slime, She's pretty chill. Makes a mean moonshine out of dead raccoons, too. We can also draw on the physical attributes visible in the photo. She seems to have two mouths, one skeletal mouth that looks to be humanoid in structure, and below it, a hagfish-like mouth protruding from the neck. Her skin is obsidian-colored and coated in a thick slime. Again, like a hagfish. Gushy hag fussy. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, I'll leave. From Trevor's description, the woman that the hagfish is puppeting seems to be alive. I mean, it says that she hates locals calling her the hag. Dead people can't hate things. They're busy being dead, idiot. Agatha's consciousness is still functioning and trapped in her decaying body that now 
almost serves as a shell for one of the most f***ed up snot worm hermit crabs ever. If you're a huge fan of the mans like I am, it would be impossible to see this creature and not notice a thematic similarity to other oddities reported by Trevor Henderson. The phrasing, she was not always like this, leads one to believe that she was once a human with regular non-slimy skin and not a neck mouth. In a different video, I covered another phenomena that Trevor reported on. The invasive species of anomalous birds appearing in the forest ecosystems. One of these creatures, the Pacific Northwestern Forest Lamprey, reportedly used dead animals as a host by turducking themselves inside of their holes and worming their way inside their nervous system. It is my theory that some sort of a hagfish-like abomination crawled up inside this lady's guts, but not in the fun way, and now uses her body as a captive meat puppet to feed on the people curious about the bloated corpse. Some anomalous researchers have theorized that this species uses humans to make it seem like they're drowning and attract passerbys, scavengers, and curious kids that want to poke it with a stick. Be honest, wouldn't you try to go help if you saw a body in the water? Yeah, that's what I thought. That's why these f***ers are extinct in NYC. This is the second example of an alarming pattern of these body-snatching parasites. It seems as if this is a subsection of a different species of jawless fish that have been able to manipulate the bodies of living, decaying, and already dead matter through an unknown means. Don't ask me what it is, I just- I didn't f No! There have been numerous other alleged sighting of these or similar creatures, but none of them come from as reputable of a source. And some of them look faked, even like an AI made them. I can never get a thing straight because of humans. Can't go anywhere with you f***ers asking the cashier how many feet picks is equivalent to one US dollar ass, playing which pill is laced with fentanyl for fun phone screen primate bitch. I looked back and the figure stood outside the main entrance. I felt its eyes on us as the growth sprouting from its head waved and twisted, as if they were caught in some invisible undersea current. This was the only information posted alongside this photograph of what appears to be an anomalous creature. This entity was documented by Trevor Henderson, who rightfully took a dump all over the Foundation's anomaly report process. Who has time for it? It's like going to the DMV. While this might not seem like a lot of information, there are just enough clues in this post to theorize on what this creature could possibly be. One theory I have is that this is an animal in some way related to undersea worms. That sounds a bit far-fetched, but just bear with me here. The head of this person bears a striking resemblance to a few species of undersea worms, and while not a perfect fit, when you take into account the few sentences that Trevor left alongside this image, it begins to make more sense. More specifically, I believe that this entity is an undocumented and possibly anomalous species of Ossidax worm. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but I'm banking that you don't either. Ossidax worms are worms that typically survive by burrowing into whale bones. They have no mouth or internal digestive system, which is refreshing because most of these critters are just full of gross red stuff. These worms rely on a symbiotic bacteria to digest the fats and oils in the bones for them. I believe that this image depicts an Ossidax worm that, through either anomalous or evolutionary means, made the adaptation to prey on humans rather than whales. Of course, this is just one theory, but all I'm saying is, unless I'm mistaken, human heads ain't supposed to look like that, man. Whereas a whale carcass can sustain a micro-ecosystem for years due to its large size, human bodies are not as well endowed. I'm not referring to the fact that whale dicks are 8 to 10 feet on average, and you can Google that. I'm referring to the fact that when an Ossidax worm gets into a human's neck, it tends to suck them dry like a fat kid with a Capri Sun. Hence, a human Ossidax infestation would likely be fatal. It's unknown how these worm eggs infect their hosts, but similar to the oceanic species of Ossidax, it's likely that they have larvae that can latch onto the human head, feasting on the brain of the person first, incapacitating them, and proceeding to use acids to dissolve the rest of the human skeleton and meaty bits. In the water, these larvae move with the current. I see no reason they couldn't use air currents on land as well, floating en masse along the wind until one happens to get in contact with a human, after which they burrow under the skin and make their way to the brain to begin the infestation process. If you're a fan of Trevor Henderson, or of my show for some godforsaken reason, it would be hard to look at this entity and not notice the thematic similarity to several other Trevor Henderson creatures. Previously, I documented another anomaly that Trevor reported on, the invasive species of anomalous birds appearing in forest ecosystems. These creatures were controlled by the Pacific North Western Forest Lamprey, an anomaly that reportedly used dead animals as hosts by sliding in one of their orifices and puppeting their head meatball. In a later installment, a similar creature showed that these entities had made the leap to controlling humans. I believe that Undersea Current is a different species of parasite that functions similarly to those two entities, although this is a new third style of feeding that is yet to be seen. Whereas the bird and human variants were predatory and scavengers in strategy, 
using their host to hunt other creatures. This variety has no mouth parts or attacky bits of any kind. It rather acts as a predator in a different fashion. Rather than using its host to feed on other animals, it uses its host like a typical disease does, as an infection transmission vector. Like some sort of STD-based vigilante giving HIV to sex criminals who escape jail time through legal loopholes. Who is my original OC, by the way. Seriously, if you take my idea for the AIDS Avenger, consider yourself a dead man. What the hell am I talking about again? The worm drives its host to go to high population areas, or when that isn't possible, follow individuals. It releases hormones like cortisol and adrenaline to put the individual under stress, and then through unknown means, the worm compels the host to pursue hyperpopulated areas of humanity. The goal of the worm is to get the host in close proximity to as many potential new hosts as possible before its consumption of the human leads it to falling apart. Upon the host's death, the worm can actually continue to move the body. But eventually, feeding on the muscles and bones of the host will limit its mobility. When the human juice box runs out, the worm have no food left, and since it can't move of its own accord, it has one final trick up its foreskin. Like a water balloon, or the condom that led to your creation, the worm-ridden human head will hurt releasing a thick gooey cloud of larva into the air. Physical contact or inhalation of the worm cum will lead to subsequent infestation. Nature is just so beautiful sometimes. I mean, not right now, this makes me want to warm the globe faster, but I don't know, eat some fucking tree bark or something. A recurring dream of a cramped hallway bleached with white light from no perceivable source. You know that the only way out of this space is past the surreal figure blocking the way forward. Every night, the figure takes one ungainly step toward you, right before you wake up. This was the only information posted alongside a new anomalous creature discovered by paranormal investigator Trevor Henderson. I have no idea how this man hasn't been contained by some foundation with the amount of preternatural cheeks the mad lad leaks on Instagram. While this information leaves most of this creature in the dark, there are still a few things we can derive from this initial description. For starters, we know that the hallway is anomalous in some capacity, as the light filling it seemingly has no source. Although, this is a dream, so all bets are kinda off on the whole rules of reality thing. The creature appears to get closer in every recurring dream, taking a step at the end of each one. Whatever happens when the creature gets to its host is unknown. Some anomalous researchers think you just wake up, or die, but you should assume the worst possible thing that you can imagine, plus one. What's worse, apparently the only way out of this space is passing by this big old goober. Good luck! We can also infer some information from the image of the creature attached to the post. An armless, tall, gangly monstrosity with smooth, pale skin. Long, skinny legs that look impossible to balance its elongated frame on. A twisted midsection with interlocking folds of distorted flesh. And a featureless face that somehow still stares you in the face despite the lack of eyes. Seeing how this entity always manifests in a reoccurring dream, I decided to research psychology on reoccurring dreams. I love human psychology because the entire field is about a monkey that fails to understand itself and for some reason the founder of it did massive amounts of cocaine and wants to bang his own mom. He was also just like wrong about a lot of this sh but he's the only psychologist any humans can name. What the hell am I talking about again? Some researchers believe that recurring dreams reflect themes in one's life, such as past trauma, neglected or unmet needs, or current severe psychological stresses in the waking life. My theory is that this monster is a manifestation of an entity that could be unique to the psychology of the person that sees it in their recurring dream. Either that, or it's just some sort of regular demon that appears in dreams, and I'm an idiot that drank maybe a tad too much airplane glue. This guy kinda looks like a mangled dong. If this creature is based on the fears or needs of the person's internal psyche, it's very likely that the crampedness of the corridors along with the massive creature suggests something about the nature of this recurring dream. Of course, this is all speculation from half-assed research in the initial description, but just like putting metal in the microwave, there's only one way to find out. <laughs>
The country road creature is a vaguely humanoid-shaped quadruped creature that walks high off the road using its long, disproportionate arms. The entire body is emaciated, skin gripping tightly to the bone. There is not a single strand of hair stemming from its pale, slender body. It has an extremity structure similar to a chimpanzee or ape, meaning that its toes are opposable and almost as dexterous as their fingers. In addition, all of these creatures' joints are a ball and socket joint, meaning that it can move any part of itself in any direction. It's able to move at staggering speeds in a series of unnatural manners. It can also seemingly climb any surface and contort itself through spaces much smaller than its own body. This creature's head looks like a bald old man with gleaming white pupilless eyes and razor sharp teeth. Now we can't even feel safe when we see a smiling naked old man in the middle of the forest at night. Is nothing sacred anymore? The country road creature frequents country roads. Idiot. It's an intriguing paranormal version of an ambush predator, disguising itself as a human by contorting its body to fit into items of clothing from its previous victims while obscuring its distended limbs. While some say it can shapeshift, it actually can just contort into a variety of forms. It is fully capable of overpowering a human on its own if the person is out in the middle of a backcountry road on foot, but in a car, they move far too fast to catch up to and capture. From here, it has one of several strategies. It sometimes attempts to hitchhike, showing that it's either intelligent or can at least mimic behaviors that it has seen humans undertake. Other times, it will make its way to remote rest stops and wait in the shadows for someone to get gas, slipping underneath the car and holding on until the human pulls away, at which point it smashes open the window, attacking the human and causing a car wreck. It quickly consumes the victim and disappears back into the wilderness. Some have even speculated that this creature disguises itself as truck stop hookers in order to get the fattest of truckers to make sure it gets all its nutrients, and that someone who speculated it was me. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, I wouldn't get tricked by this. It would take some sort of dumb dumb idiot to get fooled by this goober. That confidence is usually what kills your species in the first place. Just saying. I'm willing to bet there are more people alive that think the Earth is flat now than back then in the 3rd century BC. You're not getting smarter, there are just more of you. Foolish delicious human, wait what the f are you? Did you just pull a me on myself? You are, without a doubt the ugliest truck stop prostitute I have ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> Long horse. Longhorse is a creature that has a jawless horse skull for a head and a long, flexible neck that extends seemingly infinitely. It has a black mane cropping out of its pale skin that runs from its head along its entire body and neck. This creature can extend and add more joints to its neck at will, making a sound as if it's actually just snapping the bone rather than creating another joint. Although the longhorse looks creepy as sh it's actually a benevolent entity that protects humans and watches over them from a distance, only contacting them to warn them of tragedies to come. We had to talk to it about the watching from a distance part, but he swears it's only to protect you and not to watch you eat off. The cracking noise and the amount of joints its neck displays is actually a system of communication. The louder the cracks and the more joints it has, the more horrific the event that is about to come. If you were to communicate like a long horse, you would be able to say I love you in a series of sickening crunches and pops. I know what Longhorse is trying to do, and it's noble, but there's one huge flaw in the entire plan here. Most humans don't speak dislocated jaw bendy straw noises. Even if they get it's a warning, it's not like they'll know what the f Longhorse is trying to tell them anyways. Longhorses can appear to humans both in real life and also in dreams. When a longhorse appears in a dream, it means it's slightly less of a grave situation than appearing in real life. Or is it more? I don't know. I just know that it means something, uh, probably. In one incident, a man reported seeing a long horse in a wet dream, and that's why we don't talk to him anymore. See, I'm not always one for the supernatural, and I'm here to tell you, if you see long horse in your dreams, there is a scientific explanation. Are you ever in school or work in your dreams, or someone from your life is in your dreams, or someone tells you something and then it's in your dreams? Is it possible that maybe you saw a YouTube video and human brains are suggestible as hell? No, it's not possible. That's f***ing ridiculous. The scientific explanation is that Longhorse is real and you should be incredibly f***ing. 
Long Horse has actually appeared to me in a dream, except I was naked in a school and I hadn't studied for my test before my being chased by a monster class, but Long Horse was actually my elementary school teacher who I thought was really hot and then all my teeth fell out. I woke up that day and stubbed my toe on my neighbor's new car that he just got hit by, just as the Long Horse predicted. He has seemingly been around as long as humanity has had sentient thought, or longer, as he was noted in cave paintings from prehistoric humanity. Longhorse has been depicted in every human society since your species had the tools and brain capacity to document things. Even now, Longhorse sets the trends, absolutely killing it on his meme page, and even appealing to horny boomers by appearing on Maxim's Top 10 Sexiest Abominations. Longhorse apparently has a quite curious nature, and will examine the humans he is warning with a perplexed and interested expression. He sometimes scares people when he wanders curiously, even to the point of having a heart attack. Longhorse is a quick thinker, though and he said that he was just warning them of heart attacks to get away with it. He enjoys, but does not require, offerings such as apples or sugar cubes. The long horse for some reason smells like cinnamon. No one really knows why. Some think it's to calm the person that the long horse has come to warn, and others think that the long horse is just kinda into the cologne cause he thinks it makes him smell sexy. Scientists have concluded that he is right. Storm warning. All residents, please remain indoors and wait for further dispatches. August 6th, 2018. This EAS warning was the only information posted alongside an image of what looks to be a novel anomalous behemoth. Well, that info and the fact that its founder named it. The Wandering Faith. This big old critter was discovered by Trevor Henderson, who decided it belonged on social media rather than locked away in the foundation files. Good on ya! Ignorance is bliss, and we gotta steal that from ya! Let's start with what's inherently obvious. It's physiology. It has four tree stalks of legs. It looks as though it's not affected by the laws of gravity in the same capacity that humans are. I mean, there's no way this fat fuck wouldn't collapse under the massive weight of its own body. This behemoth extends into the sky, with several small tendrils drooping downwards below its neck. Perhaps for use in food collection or tugging on its nub. It's likely that even a step from this creature would cause earthquakes. Not to mention what happens to whatever the hell he's stepping on. What's really intriguing about the Wandering Faith is that it appears that its neck extends off screen, meaning that its head is still obscured, and at this point, unknown. While it's entirely likely that Trevor took this picture with the fear of the unknown in mind, we're gonna miss the point entirely, but on purpose. Alright Amoeba, let's find out who this really is. What? That's the most disappointing thing ever. That's like taking a bunch of shrooms, expecting to think about your problems and introspect on your life, and you just come out ashamed that you have to wipe better. The name Wandering Faith may signify some sort of connection to religious imagery. It's also referred to as Day 17, but Trevor himself has never confirmed the same. We learned some new information about this creature on August 8, 2018. A new photo posted by Trevor of what looks to be a similar type of critter, with an additional one in the background. These could be younger forms of the creatures. A juvenile, if you will. On July 30th, we get an example of what may actually be at the top of its head. It bears the same tentacles as the other creatures, only this time it seems to be bipedal. There's a caption alongside the creature. It's amazing what people can and will adapt to, if given enough time. They've had the evacuations down to a science by now. And even with an emergence, the fields kept them from doing any real damage. They didn't even have to stop the trains this time. He wouldn't be late after all. Once humanity looked at this thing for 20 minutes and realized that it didn't start immediately killing everyone, they just assumed it was a big dumb animal, and responded accordingly by doing fucking nothing. Well, some tried to eat it, I guess. Classic humans. Of course, I'm putting these three images together and making some of these assumptions on only their shared similarities and this video on ancient horror that I'm stealing, sorry, fair using, the canon from. What? Don't look at me like that. I've learned from the most successful comedians that you just steal all your stuff from Twitter so you have someone else to blame when you get cancer. Storm warning. Please stay inside until further notice unless you or a loved one has been pre-chosen. Posted on August 20th, 2019. I wonder if he's pre-chosen by like the critter or pre-chosen by a person. 
like they all just get in a room and they have a big raffle and whoever draws the shortest straw gets sucked up into the sky beast dussy. By the way, pre-chosen definitely just means for eating. Like yeah, this could be a holy rapture thing, but I got 500 bucks on us just eating them. Now the obvious question, would you stick your dick in it? These creatures all share the same skin texture and similar skin tones, the same tentacle appendages, but they all have variable morphology. They also seem to be, quote unquote, choosing people. For what, I'm not sure. Some people believe that in the end times before the apocalypse, those without sin will rise to heaven. I'm not one of those fucking people. Maybe being shoved up into this thing's mouth is that kind of deal. Who knows? Probably not. I don't know, maybe they're just choosing who looks tastiest. Also, they tend to bring a storm with them. This could be an effect that the creature has on weather patterns, or maybe it exudes some sort of fog-like steam from its pores to surround it or something. Uh, maybe he's just a big fan of the movie The Mist, or maybe it's like a fart or something, I don't know. Maybe we can learn more about them by thinking about where the hell this critter came from. Some people thought this creature was made in a lab, and then grew to uncontainable proportions. If I find out that this was man-made, the creator is going to scientist jail, alongside that guy who tried to selectively breed pitcher plants to suck him off. Others believe that the wandering faith is holy in nature, and signifies the coming of the end, or something. Thing is, when anything this big and possibly world-ending comes by, people start screaming, REPENT! END OF DAYS! So you kinda gotta take all that with a grain of salt. I have one theory about this creature that is yet to be discussed. I don't think it's some sort of weird giant horse rapture, but instead a sort of mass-scale filter feeder, like a baleen whale. It could use these weird little tentacles, as well as other organs on its massive body, to catch airborne bacteria or birds like their little plankton. Maybe there is airborne plankton, I don't know, I'm banking on the fact that you don't either. Unless we get some sort of update, it doesn't seem like we'll be able to piece together what these things are, where they came from, or what being chosen means. The God of Chickens. The God of Chickens is a tall, skinny, white humanoid chicken. Similar to chickens, instead of having both a front hole and a back hole, it has only one hole. Its face sports a pair of giant red eyes with minuscule black dots for pupils. You're probably wondering why the hell this weird thing exists, and it's to punish those who eat poultry or abuse chickens. Fun fact, did you know that chickens recognize up to 100 faces, feel emotions, dream when they sleep at night, and can also be fried with up to 11 different herbs and spices? Well, the god of chicken knows, and now he also knows that you know. The god of chickens is seemingly intelligent, as it likes to psychologically torture its victims before going in for the final kill. Any eggs the victim has in their house will begin to rot and crack, making the room smell like a North American neckbeard nest. Any unrotten eggs that the target attempts to crack open will have an unborn chicken fetus inside. Consuming this stillborn chicken fetus leads to infertility, if you were thinking about doing that for some fucked up reason. If the household has any poultry, animals, these will all become incredibly violent, seemingly working as a team to attack any humans or other domestic animals in the vicinity. The god of chicken also seems to have a strange venom of sorts. After a target is pecked, they begin to feel sick, sluggish, nauseous, and they gain an excess of weight. When examined at the doctors, the physician expressed that it's almost as if the victim had been pumped full of steroids and antibiotics, just like a chicken on the factory line. The god of chickens will eventually appear after enough Chick-fil-A themed torture. Murder the victim with a well-placed and incredibly deep peck to the center of the heart. The body is usually found later being fed upon by chickens. You can tell if the god of chickens is nearby because all chickens in the area will go completely silent before going batch insane and clucking repeatedly as loud as they can. It can command all poultry in the area, often spurring them to violence. It can be hard to tell if the god of chickens is nearby because lots of chickens are just naturally loud dickheads. In some egg farms with cruel practices, there have been mysterious cases of all of the chickens in the farm somehow getting outside of the property and wandering together in large groups away from the facility. Upon inspection of the building, it was found that the workers of the factory were crammed into the cages that are considered much too small for even a chicken. Their bones and joints distended and cracked to fit them into these boxes like a jigsaw puzzle. Despite these injuries, every worker was somehow alive and responsive upon discovery. One worker was quoted as saying, Oh God, why? In other reports of factories where the chickens have escaped in a similar 
Bonner Manor, investigators found the human workers clogging the grinder they used to kill the baby male chickens to turn them into dog food. Fortunately, this did not interrupt the supply chain, and even more dog food was shipped out on time the next day. Unconfirmed accounts of the god of chicken shoving eggs up into people's asses has also been reported. To keep our resident human safe, we've begun feeding him a diet of raw red meat and microplastics only. Side note, this one time I was in a Whole Foods, and I remember the line was taking an incredibly long time. This kind of annoyed me, so I peeked my head out to the front to see what the issue was, and there was this woman just screaming at the poor dude behind the registers because the Whole Foods was apparently out of grass-fed chicken. I don't think I've ever seen anything funnier than the expression of the checkout man on the brink of tears trying to explain to this Karen that chickens don't eat grass. This chicken monster also carries a special chicken egg, which is often seen levitating between both of its strange chicken feet hands. It lays this egg to gain control over poultry, manipulate other eggs in the area, or cause any dead poultry products to move as if they were still live muscle. It often unlays this egg back up into its weird one waist slash egg hole to protect it, but you can easily just stomp really hard on its stomach to get it to sh** it out so you can crush it. I have not had a single lucid thought in the past two and a half years. If you can smash this egg, the god of chickens will lose its higher cognition and the rest of its abilities, becoming a regular human-shaped bipedal chicken also known as delicious. I know what some of you are going to say. Isn't that the same image you used for your basis of the stalker in the back rooms? The answer is yes. There could be a simple explanation of me not knowing the God of Chicken's existence at the time of making that video, but since I definitely know all and would never make a mistake, I now suspect that they are the same person. Think about it. Have you ever seen the God of Chicken's and the backroom stalker in the same room at the same time? Coincidence? I think not. Highway worms are incredibly large animals that resemble dark yellow worms. They have glowing eyes, leathery rough skin, and a mouth with an uncannily similar structure to that of a human's. Similar to an eel, it can bend and contort itself in any direction and squeeze into tight spaces like tunnels and under freeway overpasses, either to wait for prey or to go dormant and remain hidden when inactive. These creatures hunt entirely at night, since it'd be impossible for them to remain hidden during the day, as individual instances have been reported at up to 65 feet long. Some paranormal researchers have theorized that the highway worm is actually the next stage in the bridge worm's metamorphic life cycle, but none of these claims have been substantiated and are likely false due to the many differences between the two species. Also, if this were true, because of the bridge worm versus highway worm videos, highway worm would go to jail for beating his son, but because he's just physically assaulting a random stranger to the point of death, no harm done. While highway worm seems fearsome, he's thought of among other monstrosities as not threatening since he was rendered irrelevant after getting banned from most socials due to his controversial comedy special. Raising a child is about discipline. You gotta hit them just the right amount. Too much and they become a serial killer. But too little and they become a serial killer. Whoa! Oh. You suck. The highway worm frequents highways, dipshit. These worms have been spotted all around the world, but are more concentrated in highly developed countries with numerous roadways. The highway worm is a solitary ambush predator, waiting for cars to cross its path, then accosting its human prey, similar to the bridge worm. Unlike the bridge worm, however, only the smallest of highway worms have to tear people out of their cars, as large ones can just swallow cars whole and digest not only the animals inside, but somehow the entire car itself. This worm will not only eat humans, but literally any living creature in sight. Is this okay? I'm touching your worms. It's, yes. Is it cool? Are we cool? You're not supposed to touch someone's worms without asking. This is what's gonna be going into our food later. Highway worms are worms in name alone, as they are actually more closely related to moray eels. It's thought that the highway worm is a distant relative of the moray eel that resides in caverns on land rather than holes in coral reefs. Nature has proven that wherever there is a hole, there will be many, many worms to fill it. If you want proof, just check your intestines. While the highway worm can reproduce by laying eggs, it also has a defense mechanism that that allows it to clone itself. Although it's more similar to a moray eel in behavior and general anatomy, it shares an ability with many worms to regenerate lost body parts. The first reports of this ability came when an interstate transport driver attempted to kill the highway worm by hitting it with her truck. She successfully bisected the worm, and then in true human fashion, left the truck and started celebrating as the worm's head grew a new body, and its body grew a new head. Both highway worms proceeded to fight over the transport worker's limbs. You're probably wondering where I got all this information about this creature that hasn't been stated by Trevor or isn't on any of the wikis or videos. Why don't you back it up with a source? My source is that I made it the f up. So this is that highway worm everyone's been talking about. Well, I like it.
As you walk down the dark hallway, you hear the sound of your own footsteps echo on the hard linoleum floor. Suddenly, you notice that the timing of the footsteps don't match your own, almost like there's two sets of feet moving. You stop and hear a distant patter of feet, a different sounding set of steps, a series of unnaturally fast squelches. You turn around to see nothing but a set of legs sprinting towards you. Honestly, if I saw this thing coming towards me, I think I'd start laughing. Like, yeah, it's horrifying and all, but there's just an inherent level of ridiculous with this one. I don't know why you're worried about this one in the first place. Like, what is he gonna do? Kick us? This image was posted by preternatural investigator Trevor Henderson, alongside the phrase, Ghost of the Runner. Even though this isn't a ton of info to go off of, we can still learn quite a bit about this creature if we look at its physical characteristics. Starting with the obvious, if we look at the cut where the top of the legs end, it definitely doesn't look clean or precise. This isn't just a set of legs existing in a vacuum. It looks as if they were ripped from the top half of a body. Come on, walk it off, kid. Get it? What's that? You do get it, but it, it's still not funny. You can also see a little bit of bone poking out of the top. A little bit of a wardrobe malfunction. How embarrassing. This suggests that whatever this anomaly is likely had a top half at one point, and maybe it was even human. If it's one of those humans that couldn't shut the hell up about how great running is, I'm kind of glad his top half got chomped by a T-Rex or some shit. For those who believe in the whole ooky spooky ghost stuff, it's possible that he had some goal related to running that wasn't satisfied before he got violently bisected, and that's why he's still around. This would make sense especially in the context of the name Trevor gave him, Ghost of the Runner. You may be wondering how I know it's a he. Trevor neglected to draw its genitalia, again, so now I'm going to be referring to it as an it. It's also very possible that this is human carrion being animated by a heretofore unknown source. One of the main culprits for animated carrion in Trevor's studies has been the anomalous invasive species of lamprey-like monsters, using humans and animals as hosts for their consumption of prey. It's possible that this is a new iteration of those little critters that got their hands on some Legos. If this is the case, it's an unprecedented strategy for the family of parasites. I don't want to brush over the fact that Froggy over here has no skin, but I don't know how it relates so I'm just gonna info dump it. We may also be able to draw clues about this creature based on its environment. What's strange is that many of the critters that Trevor encounters occur in spaces that humans would consider liminal. These creatures may survive in spaces considered liminal because of how their uncanny effects puts humans on edge. These elevated levels of fear would likely make humans exude more fear signaling chemicals in their sweat. If these things are invasive species like I suspect, chances are they're equipped with sense organs to smell these chemicals. Here's the thing though, that operates on the assumption that this thing is biological rather than supernatural. Maybe it exists for no reason other than to scare the shit out of people. I don't know, it turns out God is real and like super bored maybe. The floor upon which the creature is running also appears to be caked in blood. While one might assume that a skinless pair of legs running down a hall would leave some blood trails, careful observation of the ground reveals that it is stained both behind and in front of the creature. And by careful observation, I mean looking at the fucking floor. While this might mean the blood came from someone else, it's also possible he's just running in a big circle. Its physiology in combination with its surroundings provide very little info for what this thing is or how it operates. It's almost like this was an art piece not meant to be hyperanalyzed in this manner. But it isn't. It's a real monster. I would never lie to you. As for a final verdict on what the hell this thing is, I don't know. We thought he was chasing us originally, but then he passed us and he just kind of kept going like some bottom half only Forrest Gump. Look, if he's gone, I say we stop worrying about it. Out of sight, out of mind. He's probably fine. I'm in my childhood bedroom. In my old bed. I'm grown up though. My feet hang over the far edge of the mattress. I can hear someone in my kitchen bumping into things, knocking things over. I don't want to go downstairs, but I have to. I know I'll see something awful when I do. This paragraph was the only information accompanying an image of an anomalous entity posted to Twitter by paranormal investigator Trevor Henderson. Still kicking and yet again letting a middle finger fly to the foundation. Love to see it. In another post with the same image, for some reason captioned like some sort of internet horror dating sim, we find that this little creature's name is Hollowhead, suggesting that it is, in fact, an idiot. Even though this isn't a ton of information, we can still gauge quite a bit about this creature from the image and context provided. 
Let's start with his... Wait a minute. <coughs> yep, his physical characteristics. The monster's most dominating feature is its massive balloon head, complete with uncanny valley human features. Its eye sockets appear to be empty, which is strange because I'm still getting the sense that this motherfucker is staring at me with his ominous, distended grin. Its nose looks kind of normal, so we're gonna skip that part. Its dental structure looks vaguely similar to that of Homo sapiens, and the mouth itself looks like it could fit roughly one Homo sapien. One can only imagine the horrific stench emanating from that filthy, unkempt maw. Oi! That was proper nasty. What'd I ever do to the likes of yous? Oh my god, I am so sorry. You're just a regular British person. The creature's body looks skinny and frail. Look at those stick arms. Do you even lift, bro? There's no way that this skeletal frame could feasibly hold up that enormous watermelon of a head. Also, I just realized that this motherfucker has no neck. There's no way in hell he even has the coordination to balance standing up. I want to see this guy try to run, because it would be impossible for him and hilarious for me. It's also notable that this creature doesn't look like it has much space for internal organs in its torso. This, plus my 20 some odd years experience as an epic pro gamer, tells me that its head is the weak spot. If you gotta fight him, try to pop it like a pimple. The paragraph provided along with this image gives context for what Hollowhead may represent. The primal fear one felt as a child when needing to leave the safety of their room at night and venture into a pitch black house. So familiar in the day, but when corrupted by the shadows, it becomes uncanny. Of course, there isn't usually any danger. Not this time, though. Evidently, the experiencer of this has grown, reappearing in their own childhood bedroom seemingly out of the blue. And this time, the danger is very real. The distorted monster that once was only in the darkest pits of your imagination now takes a physical form. Real. Live. In the flesh. You'll have to leave the room eventually. Or maybe he'll find his way up to you. Or I don't know, something goofy like that. Okay, so here's what I propose we do about all this. We take a bunch of big old my 600 pound life people and a bunch of starving children from a third world country. And then we switch them for like a year and just document all of it. I'm fairly sure it would result in good content and maybe some deaths. I have no idea how that deals with whatever Critter Boy we're talking about over here, but if we get TLC on the phone, I'm sure whatever money they'd give us would be good enough to throw at this problem to make it go away. What's the problem again? Ho hollow head? Something about a, a head? You want head? Oh, if you're an incel, money should definitely fix that problem. Look at Andrew Tate. A gore-spattered set of antlers, viscera blurring the line between its own body and that of its victims from the tip of its red-stained horns to what should be the top of its head. Instead of a face, an empty black pit. A ring of raw red flesh reminiscent of esophageal tissue stares back at you impossibly. You swear you can almost hear the sound of flies buzzing as a rotten stench of decay wafts from the black hole. Anomalous expert Trevor Henderson has recently posted classified images of this unexplained entity to his Instagram page. Never stops flipping the bird to a certain foundation. You gotta respect it. For the most part, this creature looks like a regular deer. When I say for the most part, I mean if you never see its goddamn face. And by face, I mean lack thereof. Instead of the traditional eyes, nose, and mouth setup a deer usually has, this guy has opted for the alternative look of just a big f***ing hole. I'm fairly sure that's a mouth, but I'm going off one picture, so you're gonna need to deal with it. This anomalous deer was most likely photographed somewhere in the northeast United States. One of the main habitats of this species of white-tailed buck. This beef jerky deer was first thought to be a symbol of death, decay, and hard times to come. Neat! Interestingly, the fauna in the photograph looks consistent with that of the deciduous forests that hyperpopulate the East Coast. Cross-referencing this information with the statistics on the amount of hunters that have been left gored directly in the stomach by deer antlers reveals that it's likely these creatures are roaming somewhere around Delaware. Strangely, it seems that the deer populations in this area have taken a recent hit just as this new variety of deer has appeared. After a quick drive to the 7-Eleven, where my lawyer advised me to say that we weren't drinking heavily, 
we happen to cross a physical sample. It's the drunk crashers that get us in trouble. I, I mean, I totally did this on purpose. Analysis of what looks to be carrion on the deer's head and horns revealed that while part of this red fleshy crap is part of the deer's body, much of this flesh is actually rotting meat ripped from various hunters and other deer. Some instances of this megafauna have entire skewered squirrels stuck up there. I love me a good shish kebab. This would mean that megafauna have higher rates of aggression than regular deer. This would explain his criminal record and assault charges. That's probably why he can't get a job, hence why he lives in the woods like an idiot. Further analysis of the foreign dead flesh on the megafauna's antlers revealed that the majority of the carrion comes from other white-tailed deers. This revelation led anomalous researchers to their next theory. Some paranormal theorists believe that the megafauna is a deer afflicted by the same or similar parasites to those afflicting the invasive species birds and the hagfish woman. This genus of parasitic jawless fish-like creatures has had several recent zoonetic shift events, in which the entity adapted to new and different species as hosts. First, through many avian species, and recently to various species of mammals. If you're unfamiliar with this family of anomalous parasites, I have two videos documenting separate cases of animals infected with these organisms. Why was I just documenting it rather than helping? They may call it blatant incompetence in combination with unapologetic abuse of platform. I call it having that dog in me. In these cases, the parasite has taken control over the nervous system, the movement, the behavior, and all other functions of this host animal. Unlike most parasites, this one kills its victim and uses its carrion as an ambulatory host, rather than manipulating it while it's alive. Translation from nerd speak to normal talk, it worms its way up another creature's booty hole, kills them, and then manipulates them like a meaty sock puppet. It uses this host to hunt other creatures in the ecosystem, and likely also to reproduce and spread the parasitic infection further. One thing that's important to note here is that these parasites often target the same animal it uses as its host for prey, behavior consistent with the phenomena of the megafauna. Megafauna's potential infection case differs from other previous cases, however, in that rather than working around the current sensory organs and nervous system framework, it looks as if the parasite has completely removed these structures in favor of a big hole. Absolutely flawless design. So simple, so elegant. Minimalism really is all the rage right now. This may be due to the size of a full-grown buck, as it's the largest creature on record infected with the parasitic lamprey-like organisms. A buck has a small mouth, but a comparably large head to the other infected organisms, so the parasite may have removed the face structures to more effectively hunt and consume biomass. I don't know, I just pulled that out of my ass. What do you want from me? There's also the possibility of that maybe I'm entirely wrong, and all of these animals are suffering from different things that I know nothing about. I'm not a doctor. What can I say? When you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. To be fair, I think a hammer would also be useful in this situation. Yo, I gotta show you something while you're driving. Check out this sick disclaimer, dude. The God of Roadkill. The God of Roadkill is an entity that manifests either just before or shortly after animals are killed by a vehicle. Through an unknown method, this being causes humans to have car accidents, either to protect an animal from an oncoming vehicle or to avenge their death by flipping an inattentive motorist into the nearest ditch. This entity is theorized to be a spiritual one rather than a biological one. It's rumored to help the souls of dead animals cross over to the other side after their lives ended tragically and violently, subsequently consuming their physical form as a reward. Some researchers suspect that the god of roadkill is actually just some sort of freak engaging in necrophilia and bestiality at the same time. And by some researchers, I mean me. It has a human-like upper body that looks as if it's had its lower half severed just above the hips on the spine, almost as if it was cut in half by a car. Because of this, it moves around by using its disproportionately long arms to crawl. Reports of the creature have ranged in size from 20 to 35 feet tall. It has no skin, only ragged and torn muscular with jagged bones piercing through. Its head looks like a vulture's except a much longer and distended beak and many human-like eyes placed seemingly at random about the skull. His form can vary depending on the severity of the creature's demise. If it was quick and painless, the entity usually has minimal flesh and stark white bleached bones. If the animal were to have a gruesome demise, the god of roadkill appears caked in dried blood, with organs trailing behind, leaving a trail of blood and viscera as it drags itself along the road. This 
kind of messed up, but that actually made me kind of hungry. The creature looks, and especially smells, to be in a state of constant decay, although it never actually decays. Maggots, fungus, and other decomposers call this creature's rotting body home, making it a harbinger for various diseases. If a human makes contact with this creature after surviving the car crash, they are very likely to develop a fatal infection in the days to come. This infection mimics how dead matter decomposes to the letter. The only caveat is the person is alive to watch themselves fall apart. While it is not fully understood how the god of roadkill causes these accidents, there are a few hints in the reports that help paint a picture. For starters, the cars always look as if they've been hit by something incredibly large and heavy, like a tree, but the patterns look more similar to an accident where the motor is struck flesh and bone rather than a plant. Human authorities know of few animals large enough for this, and the regions that have these unexplainable car wrecks can't really blame it on elephants. It's thought that the god of roadkill either manifests immediately in front of a car or leaps out in front of it at a great pace. It's like the classic movie scene where the friend jumps in front of a bullet for another friend, except the friends are the animal and the god of roadkill and your car is the bullet. Now some of you might consider the god of roadkill evil for murdering humans for a bunch of f squirrels, but from the god of roadkill's perspective, he just saw you murder a squirrel because you wanted to order chicken nuggets from the highway so you wouldn't have to wait 35 minutes when you got home. He's kind of got a better reason than you. Fun fact, there is a vertebrate animal run over by a car around every 11.5 seconds in the United States. What a waste of life, but more importantly, what a waste of food. In an attempt to avoid the god of roadkill opening up my nutsack at the seam with some other dingus's windshield, we're gonna go ahead and try to repurpose some of this meat that is left on the road every day. It is my hope that if we eat this rotting meat, we can lie to the horrific monsters that we as humans actually respect animals. I've heard from the reviews that the quality kind of varies. I mean, you kind of got to expect that. It's either venison or raccoon meat, so it's a mixed bag. Now, it's not that I think the average American is lacking food. To be honest, it's just the opposite. But you know, I think maybe a few tapeworms or intestinal parasites might be good for us. We're thinking outside the box. Okay, so here it is. Um, as you can see, the outside is noticeably more purple than most meat I am accustomed to. Also, it seems to be, um, you can see here, fairly torn up. Yeah. Uh. Nothing tenderizes a good steak like busting the front axle on a Toyota Prius. If you're wondering what type of uh, meat this is, I can assure you that I am as well. I feel like ordinary sausage. Hey there, folks. Welcome back. I wonder how you're supposed to cook this. Okay, so um, it says not to. So let's get into it. All right, so I think what we're going to do is just get some salt. Some salt. Yeah. Because that's what... This is meat, I think. That's what you put on meat. Nice and salty. Oh wow, the backside is quite purple. I don't know what's wrong with me, man. I got this shit all in my hands. I gotta pour this all like that. Oh no, it's too much. Welcome to Asthma with Meat. This has concluded Asthma with Meat. Okay, um, I think the meat is salty enough. I don't know, man. I'm gonna wash my hands now and put it in, I guess, the oven. I don't even know what this sh Okay, 400 degrees, start. And into the oven it goes. <laughs> well, that's not a good sign. Yo, is my f oven on fire? Oh no! We're just gonna ignore it. I'm gonna wait for the timer to be done. I'm gonna eat it. I'm gonna hope for all the problems to go away. Two things I don't uh, think things through and know where the oven mitts are. All right then. Let's, let's, uh, this is a bad idea. What the fuck? Oh! Ah! It's fine. We're just gonna grab the meat and then. Oh no, okay, pick it up. Yeah. Okay, so here's our weird meat. All right, so let's, let's see. Let's see about this. Let's cut it open. Interesting. All right, moment of truth. Oh. Mm, not bad.
If you liked this video for some reason, you should like, comment, and subscribe with all notifications enabled, or I'll sacrifice you to the weird roadkill critter. Shout out the inner circle. Love y'all. <laughs>